Hello, and welcome to the Metalheads Podcast. My name is George. And Buke. And Jay. And this is episode 44 of the Metalheads Podcast. Today we're going to bring you an interview with the Denver band Pile of Priests. We just got off the phone with those guys and, uh, you know, it was a good time. Those guys were really cool. A lot of fun. Nice guys. Yeah. But before we get into the Pile of Priests interview, there's something I wanted to talk about. I just started reading the uh, Lemmy autobiography, White Line Fever, because, you know, there's no more Lemmy. And I needed some Lemmy, so... I, I remembered uh, that this book existed, and Jay said that he liked it, so uh, I started reading it only like a day or two ago, so I'm not actually that far into it yet, but uh, the you know, just reading the prologue was enough to hook me, because the dude was just one funny son of a bitch. He was smart, he was a funny guy, um, he, he actually, I'm pretty sure, I don't remember if there's a ghostwriter in that book, but I think he wrote it by himself, which is rare. There was somebody else credited. I have okay, a feeling right. it's probably like a lot of things where they just set up a tape recorder and yeah. record what he says and then transcribe it. So it's it's like he wrote it, but he spoke it. That would be yeah. my guess. I mean, maybe he wrote it. I, I, I may be doing him a disservice. Um but either way, it's entertaining. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, man. He he comes across. Ben, Lemmy was a, a guy who looked like a biker, but had the hippie ideal. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a lot of good drug stories. Yeah, I've already gotten a <laughs> few of those. And uh, you know, whenever I read books, um, I you know the, the the people when they when they're talking about their history and and the growing up and the things that they liked. They always talk about bands and other bands, and I want to go check those bands out because you know. While metal is my my first love, I like all kinds of music, particularly rock music. And so it's always interesting to go and explore the things that inspired the people that inspire you. And for a lot of people that I've read books for, that's pretty easy. I've already known things that they liked or what have you. But Lemmy, my God, he was old as shit. Yeah. You know, and one of the things that reading the book really made me stop and think was how he, early on in the book, he mentions that uh, until he was 10 years old, there was no such thing as rock and roll. Yep. The first 10 years of his life, there was no rock music. And I'm like, whoa, that just blows my mind, you know, because there's always been rock music, when, you know, since I've been alive. And so then he starts talking about the stuff that he started listening to when rock music, you know, was around. And he was talking about Bill Haley and the Comets and Buddy Holly Elvis Presley, uh, Little Richard, stuff like that. And while I've always been a big fan of, you know, 80s music and 70s music, because that's when I was growing up, and 60s music, because there's just so much fucking awesome music from then, I've never been a fan of 50s music. You know, my dad listens to that sort of thing, and I've just never latched onto that sort of thing. And so yesterday, I was like, all right, Lemmy, you know, this is for you. I'm going to go up on Spotify. And I started listening to, you know, Bill Haley to me is is Happy Days. The Rock Around the Clock song is the only thing I know. And I, say, I say the first heavy metal artist, seriously, is Buddy Holly. I was listening to some Buddy Holly, and I'm like, damn. You know, I actually really like Buddy Holly. Um, the, the, heart of, the heart of the trooper is in Peggy Sue. Peggy Sue. It's like it's got a gallop to it. Yeah. He, he, he really did that picking thing. And uh, so I, I listened to some Bill Haley. Uh, other than, you know, the, the Happy Days song, I wasn't really into that. Uh, but the Buddy Holly, I was like, okay, I can get behind Buddy Holly. I like this. And I also checked out Eddie Cochran. Are you familiar with Eddie Cochran? I'm sure Buke isn't. I know the name, but you'll have to tell me what his hits are. Exactly. See, you know, I've heard the name, and I was like, well, okay, who's Eddie Cochran? And it, that's what I love about books like this, is it sends me down this side path. And I was like, let's Google Eddie Cochran. And so now I've learned about who Eddie Cochran was. And he's the guy that wrote Summertime Blues oh. and uh, a slew of other songs, but it's probably his most well-known. But he died when he was 21 years old in a car accident. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn, you know, I mean, to be 21 years old and to like his, you know, name to live on and his music to live on all this time, he did all these songs in such a short period of time. And I really kind of dug the stuff he was doing, too. So, you know, it's it's obviously a Far cry from what we normally talk about on the podcast, um, but I'm enjoying sort of pushing my boundaries a little bit. 
uh, because, you know, this is like the beginning of rock and roll right here. This is without this, there is no heavy metal. You it's know? the whole reason that guys like Lemmy and Ozzy and stuff, they, they kind of bristle when people call them heavy metal bands. And the reason is because that's heavy metal didn't exist. Also didn't exist. They were, they consider themselves rock and roll bands. They were the harder, faster rock and roll bands, but there was no word heavy metal before these guys. And so it's not that they maybe hate the idea so much. They just, you know what I mean? Like that's weird for people. And, and I can see that all those guys were were born before it didn't necessarily like being called it and i think it's because they remember when it was a almost almost singularly an insult yeah i mean to be to be born before the invent of rock and roll to see the beginning of rock and roll and then to to live long enough to see grindcore <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. i mean come on that yeah. the that's got to be almost like you know just weird to have seen this whole evolution and to see where it's gone but let uh, me grew well i mean and he grew up in a town in wales with one light i'm sure you, i don't know if you read that in the book yet yeah he, yeah they had like one one i don't know what you call it street light and that was the place everybody hung out because it was a light <laughs> <laughs> like moths to the flame yeah yeah anyway i just thought it was you know it's really interesting and uh, I wonder if Mark will put those on the playlist. <laughs> ah. Anyway, moving on, uh, why don't we go ahead and play the interview from Pile of Priests. These guys were uh, some good fun, and we hope to have them on again soon. So here you go, interview with Pile of Priests. This week's feature band. This week's feature Hello and welcome to the Metalheads Podcast. My name is George. This is Buke. This is Jay. And we are here today with the guys in Pile of Priests. Hello. You guys want to uh, introduce yourselves and uh, tell us what you do in the band? My name is Evan Salvador. I play guitar and I do vocals, most of the composition as well. I'm Evan Knight and I do the drums. I'm Patrick. I play bass and I do some backup vocals as well. Why is the bass player always going last, guys? Every band it, we bring on, it it's the pecking be? order. <laughs> it's because we're both named Evan, so there's just this weird connection. Yeah, it, it kind of blurs together, you know. <laughs> They're also really dumb. He's also a ginger. <laughs> ah, oh, redheaded stepchild. Yeah, so if you could answer fewer of the questions, we'd appreciate that. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy that, too. Just to give uh, our listeners uh, some quick facts, where are you guys at? Uh, we are this- at, um, let's see, this is Westminster, Colorado, just outside of Denver. Uh, this is our jam space. It's also his house. Um, and it's kind of just our Saturday hangout spot where we you know, listen to music and wax philosophically and do all the weird things that band members do. I don't know. You know? Well, and I, you know, I, I honestly asked that question with a hidden agenda because I just wanted to point out that you're all probably three stoned out of your minds. This is Colorado. <laughs> Straight edge, bro. Actually, just me. Yeah, yeah, just him. Just right. me. Straight edge, bro. Straight edge. There you go. <laughs> Triple X. Who lives in Colorado? <laughs> exactly. Well, they used to dabble, but, you know, they had too much fun, and now it's yep. time to, uh, you know, slow it down because they're getting old. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know, you know all about have, that. We all have families and <laughs> lives and careers. I get paranoia problems. <laughs> That's a real thing. I'm becoming an engineer, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, has to. Yeah, he can't kill people with engines. <laughs> Is that a choo-choo train engineer <laughs> or high. a, uh, you know. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so let, let me first start out by saying uh, how it came to you guys coming to our attention, what brought you here to the podcast. Uh, as you, you know, as our listeners know on every episode, we uh, are a little bit of band camp whores. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, Big time. It's good place. The addiction, you know, you can never chase that dragon enough. You know, I can be like fucking Lane Stanley here. The needle's still in my arm. And I'm like, give me more, more, more band camp. Yeah. I actually uh, bought your EP just like half an hour ago. Just I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Awesome. So. Thank you. <laughs> They're already on the podcast. You don't got to fucking suck up to them. Now. I know. But <laughs> it was. I just thought it was topical since I was like, you know, I, gee, I got 20 minutes to spare. What should I do? Go on band camp. And I was so, like, and I was like, oh, Will bought it. I, I forgot that was up here, so then I grabbed that too. Yeah. So I as really a it. as a fan of death metal, I saw first off was attracted to the name Pilot Priest, which is 
awesome. Who? I was just—I was going to ask who came up with that and what exactly does it mean, other than that it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Two thousand nine is when we first started, and uh, we were just thinking of names. I, I don't know if it was like at first we were just thinking of you know st- this sounds brutal. You know, it was like zombie assault and then <laughs> something else, and you know it just sounded a little too generic. So like, why not pile of priests? Because, you know, it doesn't roll off the tongue, for one. And then, two, we can be the new pop sensation of death metal. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to think so. Well, they, And then there's the fact that we jammed behind a huge church, so it was pretty blasphemous. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that, too. Yes. At my parents' place. We've got a couple of questions from one of our other uh, Metalheads uh, alumni who uh, couldn't be here today, and he, he sent in some questions for us to ask, and it Shoot now me. seems like a good time to ask this. He said... Uh, I assume you're not a fan of religion based on the band's name, song, titles, and lyrics. Did any uh, of you guys grow up religious? We're the best Catholic band around. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Okay, so well, Pyle, you know, it, Pyle just, could be something else. You know, Pile of Priests could easily be, you know, like a football game of priests or something, George. Uh, yeah. Let's not oh, jump to conclusions here. Yeah. Hey, no, this is Will jumping to conclusions. I, I wouldn't <laughs> ask this myself. <laughs> priests, hemorrhoids. <laughs> yeah. There's all kinds of possibilities. Yeah. A rugby scrum of priests, you know? It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like, I I wasn't really raged, re- religious in any way. So, yeah, I don't think most of us really were. Neither was I. Yeah, and actually, my dad's a philosopher and my mom's a witch. All right. Because <laughs> yes. uh, w- Will's follow up question there was uh, if you're you atheists, <laughs> uh, do you plan on voting for Bernie Sanders because he's an atheist? <laughs> I did not oh know this. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say I will not discuss any political agendas with any of us on this podcast, so he's not getting that answer. That's fine. I, I, I fully agree with that. Okay, well, we can scratch that uh, gay marriage question off. God damn it. I, really <laughs> <laughs> I was really, I was like, what does Pilot Priest think about gay marriage? No, I'm not going to fucking know. So. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, you guys think this is a metal podcast, but we're here to ask the hard yeah. questions. We're getting <laughs> grilled now. <laughs> <laughs> Flip me over. <laughs> so again, which uh, attracted me to you guys is as a fan of death metal. There's a lot of shit on Bandcamp that I've mentioned before in the pod that uh, sucks. Uh, I'll just call it for what it is. Uh, and you guys came to my attention because it was an old school. <coughs> it was an old school death sound that really shined through. But the what I like in my death metal is there's a technical element there. And Absolutely. like Evan, uh, your solo work. I think it's the second track, is it? On- yes, uh, this Evan. Yes, that Evan. As well as myself. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. And that's what drew me to you guys. Uh, so anybody who's a fan of death metal and of more so a fan of the technical aspect, not like technical revocation style. Sure, sure. Check these guys out. And that's it's this like a, I would call it old school technical uh, abuse. Yes. You know what I mean? Like it's got because yeah. it's hard stuff to play. There's no question about that. But it's not necessarily math metal, you know? Yeah. Exactly, no. And I think, too, you know, Death and Chuck Schuldner, and he's one of my yeah. best influences. There you go. There's a lot of technicalities in Death that isn't, you know, it doesn't make it a techie or a brutal aspect. It just is fucking raw. And, and that's what I, you know, I really appreciate that style. And 1995 is the year. Like, that is, mm-hmm. that is our sound. And, 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 that you, and, you know, Evan, you also shine through to me, too, is that your, your vocals, a lot of Death Metal vocals right now, you know, you hear the term, George will say he coined it. I but, did. <laughs> you, you hear a lot of the Cookie Monster death metal vocals that blah, 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 blah. yeah yeah you you don't have that you got that old school like Morbid Angel type of sound you know fuck yeah, yeah thank you perfect mm-hmm. way to put it so the thing with that like so he's a guitarist and vocalist at the same time so he can't do none of this cup in the mic you know <laughs> yeah so it's like it forces him to use the proper technique yep definitely now have you guys since you formed the band were you all three in it from the, the, the start? So it's uh, me and Patrick formed it in 2009 with our old drummer, uh, Sean Bartholomew. And uh, he left the band in 2011, and then Evan joined early 2012. Um, so he's kind of a newer, even though he's been in the band longer now than Sean was originally, um, you know, he kind of came to us. And he's in a couple other bands as well. So between, you know them not being very busy and us really needing a drummer and you know he stepped up he's he's a guitar player he's also like everything that you can imagine on the okay. musical realm yeah evan this this is skype and of course people won't see this who's the cello player i see behind you me awesome evan okay <laughs> awesome yeah. yeah he can pick up any instrument and just you know make it his bitch nice <laughs> 
Yes. You know, I, we yeah. haven't uh, we haven't heard Patrick's voice enough yet. I'm only mentioning that because while we're throwing out praise, I really think the drums are pretty great on this too, dude. They're on these really tasty little ride things here and there on your ride cymbal and stuff. It just fucking clicked in, dude. Fucking sounds really good. That's it. So, Wasn't a question. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, so guys, uh, when you started playing together, was this the style that you guys kind of knew from the outset you wanted to play? We were uh, playing a, a lot of thrash, more thrash metal at the beginning, like death thrash. And then progressively, we started becoming more and more uh, death metal, started moving more towards things like Edge of Sanity. <laughs> Um, like a progressive death metal kind of influence towards it. That's your sanity. Okay. I saw one of you guys wearing that T-shirt in one of your photos. Yeah, and I was like, that's awesome. Bastard. <laughs> I like that nothing face shirt too. You know, the void that I mean, not the band nothing face. Oh yeah, not the band nothing face. <laughs> 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 so, so for again, just to remind people, this is the guys from Pile of Priests and their new album, Void to Enlightenment. Uh, gentlemen, you guys here, how has uh, the last year been? How's 2016 uh, looking for you guys? Any tour plans? I know you guys have a show later today. Yes. Uh, woo! Yeah, no, we have, a, we have a very, very busy schedule for 2016. Uh, since this is the first CD we've released in, I think, almost, what, five years now? Yes. Yeah, about five years now. So uh, we have a couple shows planned for right now. Um, we're actually going to be in a German magazine as of next week. Um, and we are going on a tour in April. Uh, we're going to be announcing that about probably next week as well. Or now. Or <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, this won't post till next week, so that's perfect. Yep. What's the uh, What's the magazine? What's the name of the magazine? Uh, it's Legacy Magazine. Right. I thought it was like some sort of German bondage thing, you know? That would be <laughs> no, it's like, the, it's like the nickel trader or something like that, too. It's a German thing. We're working our way towards that. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I saw you guys recently posted a review on your Facebook page uh, from somebody, you know, somebody had written the review and, and I read that and uh, I was a little confused because the reviewer was, you know, for the most part, pretty positive. Uh, but he felt that the album was hampered by poor production, which was when I started scratching my head because I was like, this is really good production, particularly for a death metal album. You know, it's got that cool old school, like 90s sound where you can actually hear what's going on. Yeah. And, well, uh, that's the thing, you know, we we chose to, you know, have more of a rougher production just because of that so we can capture that era. Mm-hmm. But, but also because of our budget. I but I didn't think it was rough. I mean, it, it's clean. You can hear it. It's yeah. it, no, no, it's not like super Slipknot overproduced. But uh, right. But yeah, we we didn't want it to be overproduced, and that was kind of the main thing with it. That it was you know something something a little more raw, but you know clean enough to get the point across. And, and I, I think it turned out great. Um, I just think a lot of people are looking for this ridiculous, you know. Wicked overproduced sound, and you hear it all too often, and it just gets boring, you know, where everything kind of starts to blend together, sound the same. Yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, as Buke will attest, I'm more of a like doom and black metal guy these days because so much of the like contemporary death metal is just this wall of sound that exactly it's kind of boring. And I, I go back and listen to the, the, you know, the yeah. old, the older stuff from the '90s, and I'm like, this is good. Yeah, like mo- like modern death metal, it's just a wall of of noise that hits you, yeah. and you just can't decide. For a lot of little, white noise in it, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Not to say that there aren't any g- people doing good stuff with this. Of course. Uh, well, but they're what? few and far between, you know. They're they're well, diamonds in the rough as opposed to the majority. Yeah, and then, you know, all the all the modern tempos, you know, a lot of people are trying to shoot for 240 BPM up to 300. So that's where, you know, the snare becomes overpowering and all the symbols, you know, mesh together. Mm-hmm. BPM, is that a bitter, bitterness units thing? Help me out here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Hey, uh, and uh, so I'll, this kind of leads into a good question here. And also, Patrick, I'm sorry I was hitting you with drum questions because George slapped me in the face with the text and said, uh, hey, dude. So uh, Patrick is the bass player. Your drummer's not present? or He's right there. He's right no, there. Well, I thought he had the kick-ass guitar solo. What the fuck? He does that as well. Yeah, he does oh, okay. it. That's what's incredible. <laughs> He's the multi-purpose tool. Now I get it. Now I get it. Yes. Woo, boy, this is getting complicated. Uh, since we're talking about production styles and things like that, like what are some of the bands that you guys love? You know, And I'm, I'm sort of assuming that that's some of the kind of production styles you shoot for, but more specifically, what, what, what are the bands you guys like now, new and old? Um, you know, I think we all collectively you know, like the same bands. We all have different influences, you know, that persuade us more so than one other band. Like I said, Death, um, Edge of Sanity. And I also like, you know, some of the, you know, black metal stuff from the 90s too, like Dissection and their comeback album is ridiculous. Um, that definitely, you know, like the composers themselves uh, weigh in a huge 
uh, amount to us. For Patrick, you know, he's you know always looking for like the awesome bass players, you know, that kind of shine through, especially with Death, Steve DiGiorgio, mm -hmm. um, like uh, Sadis, he's also in Sadis as well, Obscura, uh, you know, Cynic, and all those kick-ass bands too. Evan, um, kind of all over the place, definitely, you know, Meshuggah influenced Voivod. Um, so I like we kind Evan of all... them Meshuggah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. They're my... To me, they are the most overrated band in metal, but I know they're some do... people say they're that they're... They're doing something that, you know, I, I think was definitely innovative for their time, course, and they yes. started something, and now there's all these copycat bands, too, so you, you see a lot of that nowadays as well. But we what, like what... to just kind of mishmash our influences, definitely. Right, right. So... The... Sorry, go ahead, George. I was going to ask... Um... So those are some of the things you like now. Were those things that like initially got you into music or did you start perhaps somewhere a little lighter? You know, what 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 did you got you into music in the first place? You know, was it Britney Spears then and then you were like, "Oh, I'm going to move on to something heavier." Uh, cuz like my first well actually my second album was Michael Jackson's Thriller. So, you know, I had a long way to go. Well, yeah, you know, definitely when you're younger, it's a lot easier to be sucked into the pop bands. But from an early age, like I was listening to, you know, Ride the Lightning by Metallica, even OFR by Nitro. So like some weird speed metal hair wow. band. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. SOD, Anthrax, and Overkill, kind of New York area scene. So mostly thrash for me. Oh, there's a picture. There's a picture of that guy from Nitro, dude, that is just like <laughs> uh, this wide frame photo that has to be wide frame because his hair takes up like mm -hmm. oh, six yeah. feet. Yeah. Glorious <laughs> perms. You got to look it up. You, you'll, be, you'll be happy. He was, he was married to Lita Ford for a long, for a while. Oh really? Oh yeah. uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, and I'm sorry. I know that. Yeah. <laughs> it's good that's, trivia. Yeah, so, that's that's just because Jay's a little jealous that he wasn't married. <laughs> well, he, yeah. Who is? I, I don't know why I know anything about dish. those guys, but he's like this big. Uh, what do you call it? real estate? He's big in real estate now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, what about you, Evan? I guess my end of the spectrum. I, I I listen to a lot of you know like the Black Album, Ride the Lightning, were some of the first cassettes I ever owned. But before that even happened, my dad introduced me to this game called Quake. And yes. there's this badass yeah. instrumental soundtrack in the back of that. And that just put yes. me in the right direction. Once I heard that, and I was like in second grade, I even had to tell my friends, I was like, have you heard of heavy metal? <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, awesome. wasn't yeah, it? So that was what threw me in the right direction. And who was it that did the soundtrack for Quake? Because I'm trying to think that it was Nine Inch Nails, believe it or not, did that. I think it was Trent Reznor. Yeah, yeah Trent Reznor. Did it, yeah. Wow. Inch nails guys. I Patrick? never knew that. I've put thousands yeah, of hours me, into that I mean, game. Sorry? <laughs> oh, yeah. So badass. I mean, uh, for me, growing up, like, my parents listened to, like, a lot of Queen. I heard Oingo Boingo, uh, a lot of, like, 80s, like, new wave type stuff as a kid. And uh, I got into, like, some weird pop punk crap, like, Blink-182. And then I started getting into, like, heavy metal around my cousins. And uh, then I found Behemoth. And from there, it just nice. went straight uphill for me. <laughs> how'd you guys, how'd you guys, you know, the, I, I like, like to ask this question because you know, a lot of bands are meeting each other on Craigslist and stuff like that. <laughs> Uh, does the collar? Did you guys all grow up with one another, or did you guys know each other through a mutual friend? What brought the few three metalheads to together? Turkish bathhouse. <laughs> all right, so um, the place Jay's I started like working in two thousand nine. <laughs> It's not nearly as homosexual as you want it to be. <laughs> <laughs> Until later on. We'll get into that. <laughs> uh, Whatever. Uh, anyways, so in 2009, we started, uh, me and Patrick started working with each other. His sister was actually my boss, and then he got a job there. Uh, we just started talking about music and stuff, and he's like, oh, what do you listen to? I was like, ah, you know, I, I never want to bring up metal first thing, because everybody, you know, usually is like, oh, uh, that's weird, or something like that. But he's like, yeah, I listen to, like, Slayer and Testament and shit. I was like, no way, and I had my fucking Slayer shirt on. So I lifted my shirt, and he's like, Oh, right on. And then we just started talking about it. And um, he was jamming with this guy, Sean. And then they were like, hey, you know, we should try and, you know, figure something out. So we started playing with each other, it, not in a homosexual <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, funny thing, uh, I was going to jump on just, that. Yeah, funny thing is that, that you, you just said there for a second, you were a little apprehensive about mentioning uh, what you listen to because people always ask me, what do you listen to? And I say metal. And then, you know, they always yeah. say, yeah, what do you like, like Metallica or Slipknot? Uh, my favorite band being Opeth. 
So yeah. I say yeah, yeah, yeah. that, Woo! and they they look at me like you know how when a dog hears like a high pitched sound, their head goes like a forty five. Like mm? <laughs> that's yeah. like the, that's how people look at me when I say real metal bands, and yeah. the conversation usually quickly dies. Then. Exactly, or yeah. somehow, uh, oh yeah, like screamo or a five finger death punch. <laughs> like yeah, oh I wish you like a sevenfold. Yeah, what yeah. about you? Might as well say it, I think they look at you like you just said you're a fan of professional wrestling. You know what I mean? Like that's something what, that's like what that. Feel I always get yeah. Oh. So I just so assume not huh? talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> so then, it's like so, every person suddenly is your grandmother. Oh, honey, exactly. What kind of thing is that? Isn't that stuff evil? <laughs> so when did Evan come into the fold then? Um, let's see. So we knew him from his other band, Sons of Sorath. And when we started playing live, uh, we played with them a couple times. Um, super awesome, like occult, black metal, progressive goodness. Um, so he plays guitar for Sons of Sorath. And uh, when it came time, when Sean left the band in October of 2011, right after our EP was released, so like the worst time possible, um, we started talking with people and trying to figure out something to do. We're trying to figure out, you know, how to s- keep the leg going and try and get a drummer in as quick as yeah. possible. And Evan was like, yeah, you know, I play drums and I, I, you know, I think that'd be an awesome fit. So we were even with his um, kit that he got from his, no, not, he's just a friend, right? Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. I was going to say your aunt, but no, that's my other drummer. <laughs> It's all some weird like circle jerk, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, yes. Yeah, so we started playing in his uh, his condo, and, and he even had those little brushes, like you know, because we couldn't be very loud. So yes. just trying to teach him all the material, getting ready for live shows, and uh, just how committed you know he was. We knew it was going to work out, and it's uh, it's been working great That's ever a- since. Uh, has it come up where, because you see, yeah, I like, again, again, the old death metal sound, a lot of those bands being three-piece bands. Has Talk Again ever come up? Maybe bring in a fourth, or you guys kind of like what you guys have going now? Yeah, right. that that comes up quite often. We tried for another guitar player, um, just trying to get someone on the same level, and you know if they're interested enough, and whether or not they're going to you know learn the material and retain it is you know huge. So Jay it, all- is, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Sorry, no, go ahead, say, go ahead. Jay is the lead singer and guitar player in a band it, when you guys audition new members how many people come in saying oh yeah i got chops i can play do you quickly know right away you're like oh, this is bad this- <laughs> definitely before we even let them come in to try out we just kind of know um yeah. <laughs> just well, you know, one our way friend. you know is if they spend a lot of time talking you know what i mean they're like yeah well yes. you know i mean this, this, this will be really fun and interesting <laughs> Oh, so so you want the guy who comes in with like the little travel amp wrapped around his shoulder, just ready to fucking plug in and melt your face. 19 Fred Squire guitar. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Pig nose. Back in the uh, early mid 90s. Uh, me and some friends were trying to audition singers and you know we were playing stuff like Metallica and being the early mid 90s this guy came in that I don't, I don't even know how he found him but he came in and he had this like big frizzy blonde hair like fro thing and he was all like you guys like Lovely. Stone Temple Pilots <laughs> and he's like trying to sing <laughs> like you know a sex type thing or something and we we're just like next oh no yep. yeah. <laughs> too grungy <laughs> yeah this isn't going to work. Well, that's 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 cool how you guys all came together. Uh, is Are there things that you guys are held back from doing uh, in a live setting, being a three-piece? Because, Evan, again, that solo I mentioned earlier, you, you can't work that in playing live, or do you guys not play that? Well, uh, yeah, his, his solo parts uh, I do not play live. I could take the time and try and, you know, decode those. But, like, the second the So first you know what solo... that means, Evan? The band's success is in your hands. Whenever <laughs> you, you guys realize, you're like, hey, I hold the key piece. I know it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think uh, we get the point across without the, uh, you know, the um, the rhythm riffs that I don't play live, or some of the lo- solos that aren't in there either. And really, it's only just the the two. Well, actually, he plays three solos. So there's two in the second track, and then there's one in the instrumental track as well. Um, but that first solo he lays down on track two was it, it, one take. I'm not even kidding you. That's so insane. whether or not he remembers it, <laughs> like listening to it enough, sure. Um, yeah. But we can still, you know, I think uh, the dynamic when we're a three piece on stage is it's definitely full enough. Like Patrick is a beast of a bass player as well. So that fills in a lot of the rhythm yeah. stuff. I don't have to worry about sounding flat when it's just solos. Um, so we kind of compromise all together. The stuff I'm writing now definitely has more um, backing riffs and stuff that I'm trying to incorporate live. And it's a little bit different. So if the right rhythm guitar player comes around or, you know, dual solo guy, that would be incredible as well. But Evan wants to stick on drums and we respect him for it. Evan, what what do you prefer? This Evan? Yes. Me? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, it's all in the context, you know, because of the style that Pile of Priest is with this. It's a lot more comfortable, you know, for me to play this style and expand upon it in my own way. Because then a lot of the stuff I play guitar for, you know, I extract a lot of the weird atonal kind of classical era. And then, um, you know, a lot of the Ingve Malmsteen style shredding mixed with, uh, you know, ambient black metal stuff. So it's it's kind of its own dimension compared to like the, the you know, mid 90s death that we're going for with Pile of Priest. So it's kind of a, a split in my brain of what styles I'm doing. So I, I kind of can't, you know, pick one over the other. Yeah. Patrick, uh, when when it when it comes to you uh, playing, I've always appreciated the the bass tones that comes through. Uh, who influences you in the uh, like your favorite bass players? Because I've I, I can't to be honest with you. There's no death metal bass players that I can really think of. Do you have a favorite? To, to Giorgio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Steve to Giorgio for one. I mean, he was early on playing death metal he was a huge influence on like my outlook on not only how i wanted to play and approach a bass line but also the kind of tones that he would play as well uh beyond that i mean a uh, drone paul thessling from obscura oh, um man. isn't that new uh, album a, a masterpiece oh dude that I new album it. is so fucking sweet it's, yeah, and I uh love it. Beyond that, I mean, uh, I mean, Alex Webster, really strong for rhythm, and you know, uh, Steve Harris from Iron Maiden. Yep. Um, but beyond that, like, I really delve deeper into other genres for bass playing as well, like Jocko Pistorius for jazz, and wow. I look at like, um, I I, pl- I like to play a lot of funk and live. I do a lot of slap pop. Um, so is Les Claypool like your oh yeah god? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, dude. Les Claypool is awesome, and like I've always wanted to incorporate more of like a funky slap pop type rhythm into death metal and I, I don't know i find it enjoyable i like i can't remember which song it was now um i think it was one of the early ones in the uh, you know first couple songs on the album uh it sort of starts off and then it kind of like stops and there's like boom 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 and i was like oh it's like cryptopsy <laughs> yes oh yeah <laughs> yes yes that's dude that's a great way to put it george well, that was what it first brought to mind because i think it's the whisper supremacy album that uh one of the songs kind of start i mean not and, like it's the same or anything but it just kind of reminded me of it i was like oh and cool you know what guys it just came to mind i think this is what a three-piece band allows is it allows each of your individual personalities to shine through more oh yeah i know because i mean evan knight uh i mean like, he'll play multiple different drumming styles and then i mean evan salvador i i not only is his great singing coming through but uh his multiple different views on playing guitar go through and i mean I mean, yeah, and his song structure is just yeah. great. And like for me, like being able to play a six string fretless and being able to expand on that wow. and like I you know, playing the strong rhythm or like changing it up or something like that is always fun for me. Because yep. uh, live, I'll, uh, I will actually play different bass lines live. Hmm. Wow. So it, it almost kind of sounds like... Like, to, uh, you, like completely no, but, different songs? Uh, <laughs> like, no, no, no. Not like completely different songs. I'll take, uh, like, I'll take things like when I was recording and trying to come up with like filler bass lines. And I always wrote like multiple things like, oh, it'd be really tight if I played this here. But instead, I chose to do this on the recording. Yeah, yeah. And so I'll, I'll change that up live. Right on. Okay. Cool. Now, I have to ask, because I, you know how you see on some, like when bands release release live albums you'll get like a a live a couple guitar solo tracks well metallica they're throwing like a rob bass solo what do you think of a bass solo does a bass solo do anything for it because to me i'm like "Eh, basses are cool but you i don't think they fit a solo Cliff Burton is frowning upon you. <laughs> I, I know, I know. I mean, uh, so I mean, on uh, on incantations of old, uh, there is a bass solo on there that I do. Um, and I mean, I think a bass solo within an actual recorded song is great, but playing it live, like when it's just the bass itself, kind of like jamming in between a track or something like that. Yeah, it's kind of hit and miss. It kind of okay. depends on the mood. Kind of depends on what you want to do. But you know what, when, I, like, a, live, we'll fuck around with it. Well, in a live situation, I I think everybody. I can and speak for Buke at least, and probably George. A bass solo is known as time to go get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Those are the drum solos. Oh my god! 
<laughs> well, and and so the bass solo he's talking about in uh, incantations. So if you notice the way the dynamics shift, it replicates like a jazz trio. So the you know the drum beat gets quieter, and then the guitar riff comes into the background. So you know there's another play on our jazz okay. influence. Yeah. Now, when when you guys play live, you incorporate uh, songs from your EP Unholy Death on set. I ask because if you guys ever play live and if you don't play Burn, I'm fucking charging the stage right now. <laughs> you know what? Our our friend Mitch would, would love you for saying that because he's always asking us to play Burn and we're like, dude, we just want to play new material. Play <laughs> yeah. You never play it? We never play Burn anymore. Wait, you guys know I'm, what happened? The one time you guys play that show, your friend is not going to be there. <laughs> I know. Not too long ago, he even uh, him and his buddy even had like these white shirts they wrote on it with Sharpie. Like, play Burn! And we still didn't play Burn. <laughs> you know, didn't no, play. Uh, no, no you it's guys, a great track. Yeah, yeah, you guys say you don't play much of the EP. Is that because you guys almost kind of... Not ashamed of it is the right word. Is it almost kind of like you're looking forward in a sense? Right, right. We're definitely not sick of the material by any means, but you know, not playing out of state and in different. You know, usually we're just playing in Denver or like within mm. ten miles any surrounding area of uh, you know. So usually those fans have heard all that old stuff just so much. So we so we always want to try and play the newer stuff. That if they you know haven't been to our show in a while, we want to show them you know what we're what we're about now. Less thrashy, a little more death metal. Um, and but, I, I mean, Evan, I mean no disrespect with this, but uh, the growth, I think, from the EP to where you guys are at now is tenfold. Absolutely. Where, and where, I would agree with you. Yeah, where you guys don't sound like an upstart band on the EP, but you you could hear the growth and the skill improving to where, you know, the, the more the solid sound shines through. So I don't definitely I, you know, would see why you guys wouldn't want to play those. Exactly. Well, you know, and it, it took definitely four years to write eight tracks. And and <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm very picky. I throw away riffs left and right. Um, but usually we still play at least one of the old songs during a show. So, you know, it, I'll probably say it's usually ancient. Ancient Curse or the last song, Unholy Death, but we okay. usually throw in one of those for shows. You guys ever play Burn? I'm telling you, you fucking film that and put it up on YouTube. <laughs> and you say, Buke, here it is, Buke. Uh, you got it. I mentioned before we turned on the recording, what you guys play and take the stage to a pretty cool sample. What is that that you guys are taking? It sounds wicked. Are you talking about before Unholy Death? Yes, um, that is. It's it's right during uh, during the Exorcist where he's given the Lord's Prayer and she's like just writhing in the bed, like oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's spitting on him and such. And then the last, you know, she spits on him. And then right before he finishes, she's like, "Your mother sucks cocks in hell." <laughs> <That's> <laughs> just, it just sounds so wicked. It's like yes, that's you know. It. Speaking of The Exorcist, I was in the grocery store the other day, and I heard tubular bells, you know, which is the nice, theme from the... Yeah. I'm, like, in the grocery store, and I'm like, do they know what this is? <laughs> <laughs> like, picking out bananas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of weird. Like, they were playing The X-Files or something like that. Those uh, bananas how- are rotting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, the speaking about playing live, how is the uh, Denver, Colorado scene for uh, yeah. death metal mm-hmm. band? Well, you shouldn't ask me about that one. <laughs> They like doom metal. No, I mean, uh, right now in Denver, like doom and black metal is much bigger than it when it comes to death metal. Um, from what we've seen is that, I mean, when it comes to death metal, there's a lot more like brutal death metal in that aspect. I wouldn't say there's a whole lot of like melodic or like progressive type death metal. Um, yeah, like you know, there's like uh, Veil of Nath, and then there's also. Um, uh, now blood incantation they're really tight as well um but uh honestly beyond that i mean like shows can be really fun here uh it just depends on like what like day of the week um but there's always shows going on so yeah. sometimes it can be hard to get like a good crowd because everyone's split between yep. so many shows are you guys able to get a bill of other like bands uh it's tough yeah, <laughs> yeah it, 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 it can be tough yeah because again going back to, to jay playing in his band jay's mentioned some of the bands that he's played with and it's it's like man it's just like a mini vakin over here with this <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like honestly, with with Denver, it's there's a lot of really talented, creative, creative musicians out here. Um, so I mean, it's not that it's hard to find other talented bands, but it's hard to find like-minded bands. A match. Yeah. Hmm. 
I've got uh, another. Uh, I've got another question from Will uh, that sort of relates to this. He he was asking about the Denver scene as well, and he was also curious whether there were uh, other metal scenes in Colorado. And you know, besides, or is Denver really the only place for for metal in Colorado? Yeah, Colorado Springs uh, has a great following, and Fort Collins especially as well. There's some great venues up there. Um, so, yeah, and like a, a Legion who's signed to Metal Blade Records, they're from Fort Collins uh, originally. They live, uh, most of them live here in Denver now. Uh, but yep. you know, uh, Glenwood Springs up in the mountains, as you're going up through uh, um, I 70, that is actually surprisingly a pretty fun place to play. Now, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you guys have ever even thought about this before, but as you can see here, my, I'm a big Caps fan, you know, hockey fan. And you always hear about, you know, teams, when they go up to that high elevation, you know, it's hard for them because they're not used to playing at that altitude and stuff. Have you guys thought that maybe you're able to play longer or not get as winded because you're so used to playing at altitude where – if you guys were to come here, you know, maybe you could play. It's a stupid question. No, it's not. I think it's a, re- it's, it's a great question, especially for the singer. I got some science on that. Oh, shit. So it's science like, <laughs> so we're practicing up here. And it, it, I mean, it, you know, it's still like we still, uh, you know, max out at a certain level of capacity for playing. But once we come down to like the sea level states, we'll definitely have more oxygen in our blood and our brain. So yeah. we'll definitely probably be able to have longer endurance and stuff like that. So, yeah. but I'll, I think the altitude affects our minds as far as everybody being into the slow, droney doom <laughs> stuff. You, well, you know what? Now, Evan, you just gave me a perfect example to tell my wife why I disappoint her in bed sometimes. It's the, al- <laughs> it's the altitude. Ooh. It's the altitude, babe. Uh, <laughs> babe, it's the altitude. <laughs> it's the altitude. <laughs> Let's go to Florida. <laughs> No, you can also drink more, you know, so there's that. Uh, we, we, we play uh, Nebraska surprisingly a lot. There's a great scene in Nebraska all throughout, you know, Scotts Bluff. You go down North Platte um, in Podunk, Columbus. I shouldn't use that word. We love those guys out there. <laughs> um, Omaha as well. No, it's great in Nebraska. Um, and we've played Kansas a lot. So we kind of played around the surrounding states. We always go back to Nebraska. We have, you know, good friends out there, yeah. too. Um, and, you know, especially... Um, some of those places, you know, especially in the Bible Belt, you'll get a lot of those fans that are really hardcore into their, you know, metal, and they don't get a lot of good shows. And we played this one tiny little town called Hastings, and it was this tiny bar. The place was packed. We played like three songs and got paid like a hundred bucks. It was like, okay, cool, you know, like it was what a crowd. I'm serious. Like sometimes in Denver, it's just like, you know, I, I don't know. Everybody's kind of got. I feel like people in Denver don't want to have as good of a time as they could be. Like, okay. well, you know, I gotta also look cool while I'm watching these bands. <laughs> Last episode, we interviewed Theories, a grind band from Seattle. Yeah, I saw them play not too long ago. They kick ass. Yeah, they kick ass. And we didn't get a chance to talk to them after the show, but the show was held here in Frederick, Maryland at a little shithole fucking venue. And the guy who runs the sound, we mentioned it last episode, is that old guy where in his head, he, you know, him and his Mar- Marlboro Reds right on the sound. Uh, yeah, you know, he has this long gray hair. He's fucking, he thinks he's the shit, but it sounded horrible. (laughs) Do you guys... Yeah, I mean, no disrespect, but playing in the small venues, have you gone into those venues and you know right away, oh, the sound sucks? And is that deflating when that happens, guys? Definitely. There's one place in particular, which I will not name, but <laughs> everybody knows how bad it is and no one goes there, but they try so hard. Yeah. Uh, but either way, yeah, the sound is always yeah, shit. Like, no one ever goes. We, yeah, like Black Blackfast came through that same venue last weekend and I wanted to go see them because they're one of my favorite bands right now. But I couldn't pull myself together to go see them again because it's, it's, it's yeah. yeah, it's not enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Do you guys like beer? If I well, could man. drink beer, I would love beer. Beer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, there's a there's a brewery out here uh, called Black Sky Brewery. I was just going to ask you about that. I I, I actually uh, I used to be a cook there, okay. and um, we had our CD release show there, and they made a pile of priest beer for us. Awesome. And, See, and dude, awesome. Th- those guys are awesome. Like they make beers for local bands. They really support the local scene in a lot of ways. Yeah. The, 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 Will, the guy that I'm asking these questions for, he's a he's a brewer at uh, currently at uh, Fairwinds Brewing in Virginia. Um, and so he, he's our resident, uh, beer God. 
and he be, he brews beers for for local bands, and uh, so he he wanted me to ask you about Black Sky Brewing and also True Brewing. Yeah, True Brewery is another uh, great local metal brewery. Um, they don't serve like food or anything in the place, uh, but yeah, no, they they support a lot of local metal scene as well. They try to help put on some shows too. Yeah, was, okay, cool. was your uh, was your beer called Pile of Pilsner or something like that? Was <laughs> it was the Scotch Father Ale. <laughs> All right, that's well, all. Good. Here, here's another thing about the beers, like you know, we have True and Black Sky, which are you know metal scene friendly. But the thing is, is you know, you go up to areas like Longmont, you know, north of Denver and you have like left hand brewery you have Oscar Blues and then you know so there's all these like hipster style breweries that actually really probably make the best beer in the country yeah and you and, get to have pot too what the fuck yeah, yeah 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 so now now we have all these growers and then we have you know 300 plus micro brews throughout the entire state so I, I think that's a, a record for the world but yeah there's some good stuff out here that's awesome if I live there I'd be fucking huge <laughs> jeez er. dude hey yeah if you guys ever come out to colorado hit us up man like we'll meet you at black sky get a great pizza i tell you it's that's the one thing i love about the podcast we've made so many great friends i would love to see you guys live and meet you guys and hang out with you guys uh with 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 this tour you guys teased uh you know george will edit this out but uh no no you don't have to you don't have to (laughs) if you guys you know can maybe hint at it will you be traveling far is it going to be like a west no. coast middle of yeah, the country no, it, uh yeah it's going to be all west coast um oh. we would love to head out east it's just east is so far for colorado from colorado mm-hmm. um hey come hoping- on out i'm on the west coast we'll be glad to have you yeah i mean but uh I, you know sometime later on like maybe i don't know maybe later this year or maybe next year we would love to head out east let's We'd get you guys at maryland Cuba. death fest get to death yes. fest yes Please. we would we would love <laughs> to be on that yeah, you guys ever uh, thought about making it out here for Death Fest? Have you ever looked at lineups before and said, "I need to be at that"? And- oh, absolutely, without you know hesitation for sure. It, whether or not I want to just go to the show or if we can play the show somehow. Um, and since we're getting a little bit more, you know, I guess professional with the way that we approach the band and getting shows and such, we have you know a, more of a legit press kit now. So we think that you know if the time is right, we could try and get on a bill like that. Um, what happened this round was we only had about two weeks that we could use, so we figured it would just be too long to go around towards mm-hmm. the East Coast. Um, yeah. uh, and we had we already had most of the connections in the West Coast, too, so it kind of just fell into place. Um, but we do plan on doing that at some point, now, absolutely. Get down to now, Florida, too. Now, Evan, you just mentioned it. You guys you know, have like more of a real press kit. Going into it, and as the band is starting to, I, I'm going to say it now, is going to gain some traction. Were you guys... I guess prepared for the business aspect of it because I don't know what goes into like managing uh, merch, managing a band camp page, and all that stuff. Yeah, no. So I mean, I'll handle a lot of the like marketing type promotion stuff. So we uh, managed to get a hold of a PR company based in Portugal called Against PR, mm-hmm. and uh, they loved us. And I think that's actually how you guys found out about it. It is. Yep. Um, and uh, yeah, no, dude, uh, Katia from them, like they've they've been awesome. They've been helping us get a lot more reviews and get more exposure. Um, and she's gonna help us promote like the tour as well online. But beyond that, like um, for marketing and all the merchandise and everything, we f- try to find the best contacts, make friends with everyone, and beyond that, just keep pushing. Because yeah. I mean, like a- every every band, no matter what genre you are, you should have a great press kit, a great PR company to work with. And a product to sell. And yeah, this is like that, a motivation. It's like a motivational yeah. speech. All of a sudden, I'm loving this. Make friends with everybody. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, Be make, friendly. Love, love everybody. <laughs> Had any label interest? Um, we. I mean, like we've looked at labels. Um, we we would love to try and get signed so we can tour more. Uh, but so far, we are just independent. Yeah, yeah. we 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 would. We're definitely interested. Um, the thing is, you know, we don't want to get on something that's too small and isn't going to really help us out. And then again. And, you know, a lot of those bigger labels, too, they're, they'll screw you over, um, and we don't want to get into that. I mean, we no. just want to be able to play with, you know, bigger bands, and I think, you know, kind of like an intermediate sort of deal. As long as, you know, we read the fine print and everything, I think no. that you'd find the right place. Yeah. Guys, with, with uh, I'll ask the other Evan this, uh, you know, get, bring him back into the fold here. Yeah. With, with you guys, uh, you know, releasing the album on Bandcamp, uh, you know, independent right now, is there thought or are you guys in the position right now that if that label did come knocking 
you know, because I have a career. I've been doing it for 11 years. How do you guys, you know, take the step to say, yeah. you know, do we chase this or, you know, what do we do with the jobs that we, we have? Yeah, see, that is a, definitely a big deal because especially with me, you know, I do have a job that could, you know, especially now bloom into a career. You know, I could just go into the IT right now and just quit everything. Yeah. But, you know, something like this, it would probably have a lot to do with what the label has to offer. You know, we'd really have to go over the contract we probably need a lawyer at that point. Oh, oh yeah. definitely. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, the, 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 the hard thing with that is, guys, is that, you know, it's just not one person. You know, three of you guys would have to go yeah. in on where you guys are in your lives and stuff like that. I, I yeah. can't even imagine because I've, you know, with I, I look at all these bands and I've seen some success on Bandcamp with, with selling a lot of copies and something. And I wonder if they went into it expecting, well, hey, look, we released it on our own. Look at this success we've seen. But now what the hell do we do with it now? Yeah, you, you need know, somebody that can capitalize capitalize on it but then you know but then again you know you you just can't i hate to say you know we all know what the music industry is now you all just can't say hey work fuck off you know (laughs) fuck you fuck you you're cool i'm out yeah it's not the 70s or the 80s anymore no yeah exactly exactly and that's 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 rough and a lot of guests who we've had on the podcast uh tours and stuff come from them having a couple weeks worth of leave saved up from work like you know when we interviewed matt barlow you know of iced earth fame and Matt Barlow, you know, he's he's a cop now. He's able to take he's able to take his band Ashes of Aries and do little mini four or five ten date tours when he has leave. That's yeah, that's I mean, I'm on PTO for our tour and that's all the PTO I get for this year. So wow. uh, you know that, that wow. says a lot about that. See, yeah, and that says a lot because if you guys have, you know, wives, girlfriends and stuff, you, you won't be spending those days off with the family, you know? Yeah, and I'll be sick at work, you know, miserable because <laughs> I can't I can't stay <laughs> open now. <laughs> uh, when you guys would be touring, would you be d- driving around in a van, seeing the seeing the world or seeing the country? Yes, and um, more awesomeness from Denver. We from Black Sky. We've met so many awesome people. Uh, um, you know, people who can brew beer. People who I've met this awesome chick who does screen printing. She made patches for us. She can make embroidered hats and everything. And this guy, uh, Sam Panthers, he owns his own like. Uh, Car Sam Panther, shop. dude, this is my that, fucking name that, that from now on. That cannot be his real that's name. A, yeah, yeah. That, no, dude, that, you I'm got, a big I just video game. George Jay, from I now on. Claim it first. Give me that. Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm Sam Panther. <laughs> <laughs> and all my no video joke. games now, I'm going to use that. Yeah, I'm Sam Panthers. <laughs> that's a porno name, dude. Okay, I, so it might be made up. I don't know. Anyways, he's got his own repair shop. He also does tour rentals for trailers and vans, and he's got he's got this van set up for us. It's like got like four or five rows i think we're going to be able to sleep in the van um and it comes with the trailer too so he's hooking us up with that he goes by the satanic mechanic yeah. <laughs> um, yes. so yeah he he's an awesome guy and he's 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 helping us out big time with that um, is this is this going to be your first uh road trip as a band guys touring around no not necessarily we've we've gone to like i said like nebraska and we've kind of you know floated around the glenwood Springs. so, so, so you have done the van thing we have yes and okay. before he was in the van or yeah, before he was in the band, um, and when Sean the was band. still the drummer, Fair right, yeah, right, <laughs> and before the band, um, we actually had a van with our old drummer, and we went uh, on a road trip in 2010 to California. We actually played the Whiskey a Go Go and opened up for Immolation Invader, so that was ridiculously awesome. Um, and then came back around, and played in New Mexico, so that was kind of our first little taste. But now we're actually getting a legit leg of a tour on. Just, so. You know, check. Check the tires. Fucking keep the speed down, because you yep. every, every couple months you hear these tragic stories of these bands either you know fell asleep, blew a tire, you know the van flipped over, you know thirty seven oh, times. Know. It seems to be yeah. more recent now too. Yeah. Like, or I'm just hearing yeah. about it. I don't and know, but yeah. Luckily, everybody most times makes it out okay, but then you always hear how oh, the gear is trashed. You know, just right. watch it. Just watch yourself. Getting guys. stolen and whatever. yeah, or getting yeah, stolen. Stolen. Guys, yeah, that's oh, the big one too. Yeah, getting. You always hear about them assholes stealing bands. Shit. Whole whole exactly. vans worth of equipment driving down the bad. Well, side it'll of. be uh, it'll be easier since we'll be all sleeping in the car. So oh, I guess that yeah. Well, I mean, if they break in, we'll have to fight them, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I'll bring my nunchucks. <laughs> The fact, the, 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 the fact that you pronounce it numb, Chucks, makes me think you're not too familiar with how to use those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> they make you go numb, right? Yeah, you got it. No, I'm you're joking. right there. <laughs> That's good. I mean, like, I fucking know, but. <laughs> <laughs> when they're on tour, they leave a pile of priests in their wake. Hey, well, you know, right. the whole time, George, we're sitting here, I'm trying to think of, you remember when Twisted Sister went out as Bent Brother? I'm trying to think of a word for pile as none, so you guys can do a side thing called the something of nuns, but I, I, I just can't come up with it, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep thinking. One of the like, guys who interviewed us not too long ago, he, uh, what did he say? He said, mounds of ministers. Oh, oh, that's good. I got one with nuns. From the Nile came nuns. There you go, dude. <laughs> also, altar boys. We can work deep. on something with the altar boys. Something with the altar boys, indeed. Uh, again, we're talking to guys from Pile of Priests, Void 2, Enlightenment. It's on Bandcamp now. Uh, you guys also have a Facebook page. Uh, anywhere else where you can direct people to check out your guys' shit? Yeah, so uh, when right before we released the CD, we uh, put it up on CD Baby, and we were able to get it on uh, Apple Music, Apple Streaming, uh, Google Play, Spotify. Um, we also got it on a bunch of other streaming and downloading services internationally as well. So it's basically available wherever you want it. And if you guys wouldn't have done that on your own through CD Baby, some Russian hacker would have put you guys on on yeah, you know, the, and, the Pirate well, Bay. And the, the funny thing is, like after we uh, after we started like releasing it more and using a PR company and stuff uh, it did get sent to a couple like Russian review sites and then after that we started noticing it on like 20 different torrent sites <laughs> <laughs> those Russians man yeah, we just we Google that shit yeah I it's can't on remember every the, Russian torrent site I guarantee you I can't remember <laughs> the band who it was but you remember George and Jay they came on they're like we knew we made it when there, it was Russian torrent it's sites it's <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Then we knew uh, we had made it. I wanted to ask you. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about your logo and your cover artwork. Who did those? So the logo itself was done by our good friend Andrew Sars. Uh, he plays in Scepter of Elgos currently, and um, the album artwork that was done by Sam Nelson, a wonderful artist, great guy to work with. Uh, he lives in Salt Lake City right now. It's it's like suburb. Yeah, somewhere in the pits of hell uh, in Utah. Uh, <laughs> right. And um, but yeah, no, he he's a great guy. He's also doing our tour artwork for our flyer. Um, uh, yeah, Stigma is his page, and uh, uh, but yeah, no, great guy to work with. I any band listening to this right now, if you guys want great artwork, go to him. Yeah, Sam Nelson has done artwork for just about any handful of Denver bands. Um, I can name them off right now, but there's there's too many. He he's kind of like the go to guy for like artwork down here in Denver. Um, and rightfully so, it's incredible stuff. Like so, I mean. Yeah, definitely. And he uh, he worked with us. You know, it's kind of hard to, you know, kind of go in between messages like, no, I'm thinking more colors or a little bit less of this or whatever. But he did something that was, you know, totally portrayed what we were going for. I mean, obviously, you're, it, the, the image, it looks like you're coming out of a cave and then you see the yeah. sun and the mountains. Awesome. It's you're you're getting out of the void to be enlightened. <laughs> nice. Uh, I have to ask you guys uh, with YouTube popularity, will we see a music video from you guys? Possibly. Um, Just probably please not don't do a lyric video. Yeah, those are pretty lame. I agree. Um, the videos that I have up on YouTube, I just kind of, you know... Did yeah, I saw the, you guys smashing really a bottle like, of dollar bills. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes. That was, uh, that was fun. <laughs> no, there's no plans for a music video right now. Um, yeah, like Patrick said, we're really busy this year. So we got the tour coming up. Hopefully in May, we're going to be recording another EP. Um, and then after that, we have a couple uh, things in the summer plan, possibly another tour. Um, and then, you know, something to kind of support the EP as well, maybe in the end of the year. Okay, any, um, I'm going to ask it because if you can see, I don't know if you can see my short or my huge vinyl collection. All three of us are vinyl guys. First off, do you guys collect vinyl? We like to ask everybody. And will there be a pile of priests vinyl one day? We are not vinyl collectors. I am a okay. CD collector. That's just wow, my okay. medium. Um, I used to work at a local records shop called Angelo's. And uh, I swear, like every shift, I'd pick up a new CD. So I've, you know, beefed up my collection indeed. But there are, you know, people who love the vinyl. And yeah, like, we, we were thinking about it too, but it's it's pretty pricey to print, and especially yeah. for us right now, there's just other merchandise items that we'd rather have, like more T-shirts. Um, we want to have enough CDs. You know, a lot of people, especially in Denver, they go for the cassettes, and it just drives me nuts because, like, where That's where the fuck am I going to play this thing? You know? Yeah, yeah. Fuck that, dude. Don't don't fucking take that bait. That's bullshit. That's no, I, I think like it's times silly. a thousand. Yeah, it's I'm, it's like it's like a I'm nice little thing to have, but like yeah. it, you know. Is there any way you guys could put this out on a seventy-eight record? I mean, come on, go, go fuck right, it. just That's a sad. single or reel to reel. Actually, is next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't understand That's how we're going to record the EP is real to real. Yeah, good man. <laughs> I don't understand the whole cassette. I understand the vinyl thing because no you know, nine, nine times out of ten, you know, you get a nice download code, but I don't understand the cassette thing. I've got piles of and piles of them here that haven't been played in twenty years, and you probably hate no that bad. dusty pile. I do. I, I, I I've been meaning. I mean, I don't know why I held on to them, but uh, I'm yeah. a pack rat, I guess. Uh, but I would never ever listen to any of these again unless well, I absolutely had to. You know how yeah, right. some guys come home and like take out their anger, or, like you know they smack around uh, something, or uh-huh. they they drink beer. George comes home and just slaps the cassette deck. Just <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. Well, fuck do we you need to have pace. an intervention for your, for your <laughs> yeah. collection? Well, these these people that like cassettes obviously have not dealt with the agony of. Uh, I remember when uh, Exodus Pleasures of the Flesh came out. I bought it on cassette, and I p- took it home, and it immediately got eaten by my tape player. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and to the, to the point where I had to take the whole thing apart and put put the cassette back together inside like a Maxell case because it was just completely fucked. And you know, when you're in high school and don't have any money, that's that's you know, you're just like no, like the Darth <laughs> Vader, like you know. Right. Uh, I don't miss that at all. Exactly. I, I don't I don't get that at all. It's cuz they smoke too much hash. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> they forgot well, why you don't use those anymore. Yeah. Exactly. yeah, they do. Well, they'll be reminded soon enough if they try. You know what? I'm exactly. really not enjoying this. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like why did we decide to do that? <laughs> what the fuck? Um And and I also wanted to mention too the uh, your guys' band camp, the album is only six bucks. Uh, guys, people, we you spend, you spend more money on, you know, coffees or shit each day. Yep. Buy yep. this album for these yep. guys. Uh, yep. You guys have any Twitter handles, anything like that, where other people can follow you guys? We're on Twitter also. Um, I think we're starting up an Instagram. We're definitely going to get that going for tour uh, to keep people posted. We're going to be posting a bunch of videos and keeping everybody updated that way. Facebook is usually our first place to go, especially since all our friends are already there. They can see it. They can share it. Um, um, so we got to get you know more diverse into Twitter and kind of go that route. But we're definitely gonna try and get on every social media site that we can, but not MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, breaking ground there. Yeah. What is a MySpace anyway? <laughs> no idea. So why don't we play a song from Void to Enlightenment? The first song we want to play is called Deranged Youth Secession. Can you tell us about that one? That one uh, is the song that I wrote about like school shootings um, and just kind of how you know somebody's uh, their past and you know maybe their parents could weigh into uh, how they uh, come to uh, do such violent acts of uh, sh- selfishness. Um, and you know how our society uh, plays into that as well and it's our longest song from the album it's almost nine minutes long um, and, and I think you know it's, it's, it's probably the opus in my opinion there's just so much going on um, and I think you know as far as like technicalities too that was definitely one of the more technical songs and trying to execute playing it and singing it at the same time was a chore for me um, I write these riffs and I'm like now I had to sing to this what I'm, I'm an idiot you know uh, but yeah no it's, it's one of my favorite tracks from the album and it, it definitely you know pushes through as such all right this is pile of priests from void to enlightenment deranged youth succession yeah
All right, that was the first part of our interview with Pile of Priests, and that was their song, Deranged Youth Secession. Stick around to the end of the show, and we will play you another song from Pile of Priests. Why don't we get into some news? So it's been announced that Metallica are the ambassadors for Record Store Day 2016. Wasn't last year Dave Grohl, I think? Oh, was he? I don't know. I I know he was in the past. I just don't know if it was last year or if I'm... Sure. Okay, that makes sense. Remember. I don't know exactly what that means. I mean, does that mean we're going to see some, uh, you know, exclusive Metallica, you know, vinyl? It's an honorific uh, title only. <laughs> yeah, I mean... But I think I, we've received Metallica every year on Record Store Day. Oh, I yeah, remember we had do. that, like, Lords of Summer, or whatever yeah. it's called. And um, last year was the cassette, the No Life Till Leather cassette last year. Yeah, the one that it was gone in a second. Gone in a second. Yeah. I, I, they, um, I, I had read in the news article, I read that they were sort of instrumental in its rise the record store era maybe they've just always supported it i don't know but hey you know I, yeah we'll see what it means um i think our second news story is probably not too related but it might be a little bit yeah they're also reissuing kill em all and ride the lightning in april on vinyl and uh unfortunately i've already got them on vinyl so i i don't know that i'm going to pick them up again but well, these are also very pricey box sets george that come with all kinds of extra shit I mean, they may well do just a single version, too, of just the album, but you might go look at it. it. I mean, it's like they both come with like a live show and like demos of that were done at the time. And um, and just all, a shitload of stuff comes in this box. It's huge. A pair of large used underwear. I think there's like a couple hundred bucks. So you might get some underwear in it. You never know. Yeah. Metallica are the kings of overpriced box sets. Yep. Well, they got they got fans that'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Not me. So, you know, I I was watching the Grammys recently. Uh, I wasn't really watching. I was sitting there insulting them while my wife yelled at me for insulting them and because uh, she likes to watch them. And I was surprised towards the end of the show that the, uh, they did a tribute to Lemmy, uh, which was very surprising given how the Grammys completely ignore heavy metal, despite the uh, token, you know, metal performance uh, Grammys that they give, uh, like, in a back alley somewhere. Uh, but they, uh, the Hollywood vampires, uh, came out and did a tribute for Lemmy. And that was like Alice Cooper singing and Joe Perry from Aerosmith and Johnny Depp and Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses, uh, and some other people that I didn't know who they were, but there was a giant picture. Is that picture of Lemmy where he's got his, like, he's like, he's pointing and he's kind of looking like, Hey, yeah. like it's, it's like sort of the Lemmy Fonz move. <laughs> and, you know, he's like, Hey. But uh, they had like a banner of that up behind the stage, and uh, I was I was glad because I'm sure, you know, every time they panned to the audience, I was like, these people have no clue who he is. Yeah, of course. <laughs> what did they do? What songs did they do? Uh, they, well, they did Ace of Spades at some point. They started with something. I, I think it was one of their own songs because they they put out an album. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and then they 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 went on and did Ace of Spades. So uh, I didn't see it, and I sh- I'm sure it's available everywhere. I should go look and take a yeah, look at it. I'm sure it's up on YouTube. I mean, they did um, used to the Hollywood Vampires was a real thing like back in the day where it was a bunch of guys who got together and basically got drunk in the 70s and they probably pushed into the 80s and Alice Cooper was an actual member of that group and I think Lemmy probably was at some point okay. um, and they they called themselves that and they used to just be it was like a weird little social club or something and they all just went to the rainbow and got drunk basically <laughs> yeah yeah I mean that's I think not even basically that's that's all they did <laughs> yeah and in case you care Ghost won best metal performance Eh, I kind of care, but it's like one of those things with the Grand. I mean, none of us probably takes the Grammy seriously, I'm willing to bet. No. So there's that. But then secondarily, they always get to the party late. If they deserved a Grammy, it was for that first fucking record. But of course, they're not going to hear about some independent band on the Grammy. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so. So um, speaking of uh, gothic-themed bands, uh, this is a band that, this next item is about a band that Buke told me about the other day. Do you know that this band's a super group? Is it? Yep. It's a super group, you said, Buke? Yeah, wait till... Let George tell the story, and I will mention some of the bands the guys are from. The band is called Them, as in King Diamond's Them, and they're releasing an album soon called Sweet Hollow. It's going to be coming out in the spring. Right now, you can get a three-song like sampler 
up on Bandcamp and called uh, Fear Them. Fear Them. And uh, you know, you told me about this. Uh, I was actually at the gym at the time. I pulled it right up on Bandcamp, and I was like, "Holy shit!" There are two things that immediately sprung to mind. First of all, King Diamond's going to be knocking on your door going, hey, what the fuck? This, <laughs> this is, is my like, music. <laughs> this is King Diamond, like, stamped out. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. There's, there's a band called Attic that I have talked about in the past, and they sound very King Diamond-esque, but not, not like this. this much. This is really, <laughs> like, they, they hit his high notes and his low notes, just, like, perfect. Now, I mentioned that this was a all-star group. Uh, you have Troy Knorr from Cold Steel on vocals. Uh, trying to see other guys that step out. Uh, guitarist is Marcus Johansson from Forearm. And the Washington Capitals. Yes. Uh, drums is Kevin Talley from Suffocation. Is that true? He, he plays for the Caps? No, it's just there's a guy named Marcus Johansson oh, on okay. the Caps. Right. Well, I mean, there are, I, 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 weird things have happened. But. Uh, Kevin Talley, he's the ex de- 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 decrepit birth, dying fetus, misery index, six, six feet under. And Mike Mike LaPond uh, on bass of Symphony X. That's quite a uh, pedigree there. Yeah. Very uh, wide ranging style. Exactly. Very wide range group. And it's cool to, it definitely, you can tell that they're probably fans of King Diamond. And again, this is King Diamond. If you would not have been told what this is, you could think, hey, yeah. this is King material I haven't heard. Yeah. Some yeah, record the, the, I've never heard before. Yeah. The second item that I, I said that I, I thought of when I heard it was, damn, this is awesome. Because, you know, it, it sure it sounds like King Diamond, but uh, it sounds really good. I love the guitar tone on these songs. You know, oh, no, it no, sounds really good, dude. It's well produced. Yeah. Nobody plays like this anymore. You know, it's all no. either death metal, black metal, doom metal. Nobody plays this just like really good, like right. just metal, you know, that it's all it, it's all got to go into some sort of subgenre or whatever. But I just love, you know, guitar playing like this. Traditional. The, the lead singer wears makeup where it looks like he has like a burned inverted cross going across like the side of his face. Nice. Kind of like two two face. And apparently they're going to be touring with Halloween. Yeah. Oh, oh good for them. Yep. Which should be interesting, you know, the heaven and hell. All right. Click on that link I just sent you. Yeah, I'm doing that right now. I don't know how to get there. Oh, yeah, dude, that's fucking cool. And that is so King Diamond, even without, you know, the, I mean, the hat and the everything. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's wicked, man. Oh, yeah. So it's been long overdue, but Deep Purple are finally getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And as is so often the case with bands that have splintered over the years, you have to wonder who's going to show up for this thing. And surprisingly to me, Deep Purple said that they are unwilling to play with Richie Blackmore. I kind of thought it would be the other way around. Apparently, I think it's just because there's just so much acrimony there now, dude. I, I, but still, I thought it was all on Richie's end. I thought that, uh, you know. No, Richie you know what it is? And I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you, George. We've come full circle, and this is the same thing happened with Pink Floyd, unrelated as they may be. And what I mean is, Roger Waters for years was a prick. <laughs> and they all got to hating him so much. And now, Roger Waters, finally, many, 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 many years later, just in the last few years, has been like, oh, you know, I miss the guys. It'd be nice to get together with them. And I know I was kind of a jerk. And they're like, no, never again, buddy. And I honestly think that's where they are with with him i'm i mean he he like threatened to kill ian gillen a couple of times and things like that so i just he's not quick to forgive you know guess not yeah which it's too bad it's too bad because it's he is a defining member of that band to be sure you know yeah is almost as much as or more than gillen if you ask me you know i mean richie blackmore was the purple in a big way so yeah it's too bad that's too bad that that shit happens but hey man richie is famous for burning bridges and apparently he can't rebuild this one apparently volbeat is apparently finishing mixing a new album that at this time has no release date but uh, I'm, I'm definitely kind of looking forward to that. I really liked their last one. Did you like them, Buke? I still don't really know these guys for whatever reason. No, I, I liked it a lot. Okay. They're pretty commercial, you know, but they're pretty awesome, too. You know, I mean, I, for, I hear that exact, almost exact yeah. review from a lot of people. That's pretty much what people say about them, both of those things. I, I, no. d- I dig the guy's voice. I was voice. joking. You don't I like was them? Joking. No, I can't stand them. Right. Well, <laughs> poo-poo on you. Um, I liked it. I can't stand them. All right, then. Moving on. <laughs> well, what about these guys? Gojira has also finished mixing their new album. We've been waiting for years for these guys, for this album. Yeah, and I believe it's coming soon. Like, in the next, like, March, April, May. There's a lot of talk about Something like this. that. I so, heard some pretty um, exciting things about it in the, in, when they were interviewing the Joseph, I think is his name, or Joe, or whatever. And he was basically saying that it, generally they've always, you know, written a bunch of songs, and they went in there, and they thought, well, we can make this work, or whatever. But he said this time, 
time, we would get something, and if it didn't seem interesting, we threw it away, you know? So I think this is one of those things where a band is suddenly in a hyper-focus, and it sounds to me like this is going to be kind of a special record. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Have you guys heard the uh, new Amon Marth song, First Kill, from their new uh, concept album? Yes, sir. I have. I like it. it I is... personally haven't. You haven't heard it? No, I have not heard it. I am a big fan of them, so I want the whole package all at once. Y- y- you're, you're giving it the Star Wars treatment. Exactly. I don't want <laughs> Going it. dark on them on a Marth. Yep. I don't want a little tease and then, you know, I can't get anything for a while, you know? Yeah. Well, I've been playing it a lot, and it's pretty badass. Andy, yeah, Andy, Sne- Andy Sneap is producing again, and uh, the production is brilliant. And uh, the video is kind of interesting, too. Oh, I didn't watch the video, but I will. Yeah, it's not a lyric video. It's a real video. <laughs> It's, real. Um, it, it's. I mean, it's par for the course for them because there's no, there's no huge surprises in it, but it's good. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good song. Yeah, it's just more awesome amount of money. Yeah. So we got a whole slew of albums coming out in the next couple of months. Uh, Isan's new album, Arctis. Uh, unfortunately, it was supposed to come out in March, but has now been pushed back to April 8th. So we have to wait a little bit longer for that one. I was really surprised and overjoyed to hear that Shamash has a new album coming out called Triangle on April 29th. If you recall, their last album, Contradiction, was high up on my list uh, on in 2014, I believe it was. It was a really good album, so I'm really hoping that this one is like even better than the last one. It was one of the best records of that year, and um, I'm a huge fan of these guys. I follow them on Facebook, so I would see when they were doing updates and recording, but I have to be honest, I didn't know about this release date until you put it on the script. So I'm super psyched about this. This would be one of my most anticipated releases uh, right now. And, yeah. and, and judging by some of the photos, George, it's going to be cool, because there was like all these pictures of them recording in a monastery hmm. using weird old instruments it sounds like it's just going to be a real thing yeah that's awesome and you know the fact that i just found out about it and now it's only out in like two months that's like Ooh, even goody. better you know when yeah. you hear about you know your bands one of your favorite bands has a new album out and it's like it'll be out in nine months and you're like <sighs> you know all yeah. right start waiting i but, agree all right when, when i read this and the date i was like fuck this is great dude. there's so good many news. this is good metal news yeah so many bands are like surprising me with stuff in fact uh, we've got a couple more of here that are actually quite surprising uh next up is vector and they're releasing their new album terminal redux on may 6th i don't know if you've heard these guys jay but uh, they're pretty badass uh you know like t- no, sci-fi I thrash that's, I have not. It's Vector yeah. with a K, V E K T O R. Make sure to check right. out their first two albums. Gonna do Black Future and and Outer Isolation. Cool, dude. All right, good. Yeah, no, I don't know them at all. Next up is another one that's coming out of left field and surprising me, and I'm super excited about is the new Grand Magus album called Sword Songs, and that's coming out on May 13th. Their last album, Triumph and Power, was uh, well. The, the song, the title song, was one of my favorite songs of that year. So, hopefully they got some more good stuff in store for us. Yeah, their records are great. They're one of those bands that you can just kind of count on. You know, they're, they're nothing super fancy or anything like that. Just this big riffy, not quite stoner rock, but, you know, just big riffy band. Just but pounding your, fun. you know, your, your, your fist in the air, fist pumping kind of music. Yep. It's just like, yeah. I haven't listened to these guys, George, since you had me check out Hammer of the North. So I may, I may dive back. I know. I, I remember one time we went to the store and you bought you know, like four of their records of Soundgarden mm-hmm. or a couple. So I should probably dive back into them. Yeah. Check, check, out, check out Iron Will. They have a, I mean, they have a lot of great records, but Iron Will is one of my favorites. Yeah. There was one album. I can't even remember which one it is now. It was the one before Triumph and Power. Um, the Hunt? The Hunt. Yeah. I kind of like, kind of like ragged on them for that one. Uh, yeah, you did, but I, 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 I got over it. I, I like it now. Yeah, they go. They, they are not afraid to kind of take a couple left and right turns here and there, so to speak. I mean, within a pretty small, you know, it's not a wide highway. They're taking these turns on. It still always sounds like them. But yeah, man, these are. I like Grand Magus actually. I'm excited about this record. That'll be cool. I'm glad to hear it's coming out. Yeah, and then this next one totally threw me. I was like, what? Death Angel is getting ready to release The Evil Divide on May 27th. I have no doubt that that will be exquisite thrash metal. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did kind of know this was coming just because I've been following them a little bit, and I hear when they were mixing it and shit like that. But yeah, good for them, dude. When you say following them, you mean like stalking them, right? <laughs> yeah, essentially, yes. Since they are from the Bay Area. Since they are, yeah, since they are, <laughs> they are around here. And uh, as far as releases, we've got one more. Candlemass has set June as the uh, time period when they're going to release their new EP, Death Thy Lover. 
So I guess we'll finally I, get to hear this new singer. Yeah, and I, and I medium medium grade excitement from the, on me on this one. I have I, I'm hopeful, but when you start getting into three and four singers, you know, it gets a little you know things get a little rough when you're when you're getting on your third singer. So I'm sure the music will be great and everything, but I already kind of got emotionally attached to two different voices in this band. So yeah, but I hold out hope. I mean, it could it might kick our asses all over the place. Never can tell. Never can tell. And it is Candlemas after all. So Exactly. So we're always complaining about we don't have big metal festivals in the United States. You know, we've got Maryland Death Fest. And uh, I know there's like the, the New England Hardcore and Metal Festival. And well, that's still really just about it. Because this new Chicago Open Air Festival, as far as I'm concerned, is a giant piece of shit. I, I didn't don't see, know. I didn't, you said the lineup was shitty. So like, who's on it? I didn't even look. Okay, yeah. well, let me give you some of the names. On Friday, Rammstein, uh, like, I'll just run down the list like Rammstein, Chevelle, Ministry uh, oh, okay. of Mice and Men. I am getting bored. Yeah, Mish- keep going. Meshuga, Devil Wears Prada in this moment. In this moment. Trivium, Hollywood Undead, Hatebreed. Yeah, there's a few good ones. Uh, oh, like you. Saturday, Disturbed Corn, Breaking Benjamin, Gojira, Helmet, Def Heaven. Yeah, wow. it's like they've got Gojira, which is Carcass. good. They've got Carcass oh, and Def right, Heaven. Good. They've got um I, personally, I'm okay with Ministry. They got Kill Switch Engage, Crows of Conformity. That was the other one, COC. So this is a weird bill. Yeah, it's because just and not. That, it's, and my most hated band, Baby Metal. Yeah, Baby Metal. It's like what? it's like Rock on the Range. You know, I I, I know people that I I've been to Rock on the Range. Uh, just because uh, some friends of mine were playing there and I went along. It's kind of like Rock on the Range. It's all these like commercial hard yeah. rock acts. It's not really a metal show. No thanks. There are, I mean, Carcass is like swimming, swimming in a sea of commercial Shit. bullshit here. I don't, I don't understand what that's all about. No, why would you go? Why would you put yourself through a day of that just to see Carcass? You are a ministry fan, guys. Oh, I am. I'm medium. They were big when I was working in a record store back in the 90s and, um, we, we certainly played them a lot at the record store, and I like some of it. Um, I, I, in all honesty, don't own any of their records. You know, Psalm sixty nine is my favorite. That's the Mike Scotcha one. That's just fucking brilliant guitar work all over it. Uh, Filth Pig was pretty good. Um, is Al Jorgensen, boy, he looks fucking weird now. He's a rough looking dude. Yeah, yeah, he does. In fact, our next story happens to be about Al's new band. So let me uh, sort of preface that. Uh, when Mike Scotcha died, uh, like days after finishing recording the last Ministry album, Al Jorgensen just was like, you know, I can't do this anymore. There will be no more Ministry albums. Yeah. And so Al has started up another project called Surgical Meth Machine. And they just released a lyric video for the song Tragic Alert. And if you like Ministry, you'll like this. Uh, you know, it's pretty fast and heavy, sort of like the last uh, the last Ministry album. Uh, to, to be honest, I had to go back and double check and make sure this wasn't like a final project for Mike Scotcha because the fucking guitar work was just super fast and, yeah. and precise, just like his playing. But uh, so there you have it, you know, Al's new project. He's, he's getting up there in age, too. I mean, he's got to be maybe even his 60s. Yeah, and yeah. I read his book uh, sometime last year, and... Psh- Damn, is he lucky to be alive? Oh yeah, big time. I mean, he's yeah. he was one crazy son of a bitch. Yeah, Al's done some drugs. Yeah, he's no, he's done them all. Yeah. There's none left. <laughs> Al did yeah, them all. <laughs> Al's done the drugs. Yeah, but uh, all right, one last item here, and uh, I'm sure Buke's gonna tap out on this one. But uh, Baby Metal has uh, they're streaming their new song called Karate, and uh, I I got about halfway through it before I said, you know. My fascination with baby metal is over. I am Can I go a- on record saying I have never, ever liked a single fucking thing that these band has ever done? I don't see what the allure is to them. Fuck it. I, I don't like them per se. I found them a curiosity, just like a, a car wreck or, right, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just, I, I, you know, you, you look at it and you're just trying to understand what's going on here. And, uh... But I, you know, yeah. I'm over it. <laughs> I'm ready yeah, to move on. I love that 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 is your take on it too. I mean, I never even looked close enough to really know the difference. But I, I love that that your take was, oh, okay, that joke has run its course. <laughs> Pretty much, you know. And we discussed that in the past when the album first came out. We were like, you know, is this going to have staying power or not? And we were all sort of in agreement, I think. That it was just like, no, this is, you know, it's a uh, a novelty. It was a novelty uh, kind novelty, of thing. Yeah, and, you yeah. know, that novelty is going to wear off. And for me, it has because I'm just like, whatever. It's just, uh, it's not good. It's not there good. Go. All right, let's do new releases. This week's new releases. Yeah, they are. Spend the hour on our money now. I'm 
I'm super excited about this first one because, uh, well, it's awesome, frankly. This is the new Anthrax for All Kings. Duke and I, I think, are both behind uh, the ball on this one, George. We haven't listened to it yet, especially since I saw Buke ask you, could you put it in the box this morning? And uh, so I'll be downloading today and listening to it. I did listen to samples. Sounds great. Yeah, I'm hoping for the best. And it's, and I know you're impressed with it. So And um, even and though... Again, I, I, George and I have... Spoken many times uh, about our love for worship music. You know what? Just include me in that, Buke, because that was one of those records that blew me away that year. So I, I really have ho- high hopes for this. I really you hope know? you guys like it. The only song I don't really care for is the, the one they're playing now, Breathing Lightning. Okay. And even that, I'm like, I'll take that over Justin Bieber any day. Well, I looked at the, I, what I did do, and now that's in the box, I'll have the whole thing, but I went and I listened to the samples on iTunes. More, impo- But then I looked at one of the reviews, and the, the iTunes featured review is a rave. The one that they kind of just put not like by a user. Yeah. And they, like, they were just like, this is just a love note to heavy metal, you know? It is. It's, it's yeah. really good. It, you know, it's, it's a little little different, but not too different. It still has sort of some of that like worship music feel to it. Good for them, dude. Good uh, for them to be this far along in their career and making basically their best records at this point. Yeah, I, I really like the track Monster at the end. Uh, the one they've been playing a lot, Evil Twin, is really good. And uh, there's another one called De- Defend Avenge. Fucking brutal. Not brutal, just fucking awesome. Cool. And uh, so check that out. Uh, there's also the new Anvil album. Anvil is Anvil. And it will have the word Anvil. It'll have the word Anvil on the cover three times. Three times. <laughs> Anvil What's is the, the word, and the word shall be three times. Anvil, anvil, anvil. And you, you, know you do that, the and then they show up at your house, and they play heavy metal music. Wait, the, the name of the movie was actually kind of funny. It was something like, and it had the word anvil in it twice. It was like the... Anvil, the story of anvil. Yeah, anvil, the story of anvil. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, if you like Anvil, it's more of the same. I like Anvil, so I am well pleased with what I received. And I, I'd like to point out that, I, as we mentioned in the last episode, I backed the, backed the album and got a couple of cool things from it. But what was really cool is uh, when they finally sent the link to download the album, they included a flak link. I was like, Yes! Oh, dude, that's cool. Good. Yeah, not a lot Good. of people do that, so thank you, Anvil. What, lab- what label are they on, George? Are they mm, on a label? I don't know. Okay. You looking it up? Anvil's on Steam Hammer. Ah, okay, uh, yes. Yeah, so that's good for them. Good for them that they... That's good. You know, they got somebody behind them who can actually pay for their record, so... Yep. Um, and their fans <laughs> paid for their yeah. record. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anyway... Um, so next up we have Destroyer Six 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 and their new album Wildfire. I think I got it. I think we're all pretty probably excited about that one. I know Buke has uh, been talking about them all, lately. I listened to it all the way through last night. It's like Black it's like, Thrash. Yeah, but they go a couple of different directions this time. There's a little more traditional stuff in there too. Um, even one song in particular is just almost like a traditional style heavy metal song without being really an obviously thrash song. This is a really a good record. I'm really enjoying it. I've only been through it once, but it's definitely one that's gonna be. I listened, I was intrigued enough to keep spinning it. I like them anyway, but yeah, this one's going to get get rolling with me. Got a yeah. cool cover too, and, and we'll be seeing them at Maryland Death Fest this year. Which is one of the reasons I was moved. I wouldn't always think of these guys right away, but I moved to get it right away because it's like oh, I'm going to be seeing. Them. I better get that new record right away. So yeah, you guys are both going to like it. It's um, I think of them is in this mildly in that goat horror category. You know, yeah, that makes sense. A little bit, a little bit more old school, um, catchy and stuff, but still modern enough to to get by. I actually will just go on the bot now and say re- I recommend this record. Well, all right then. You heard it first from Jay. You heard it first here. <laughs> Jay's stamp of approval has been <laughs> activated. Next up, the new Entombed AD album, Dead Dawn, is also out. You've been Buke. listening to that at all, Buke? I have. It's more Man. my death and roll, baby. I'm <laughs> liking in- Entombed still. Yep. Ain't nothing more to say. If you like Entombed, if you like that kind of the you know, death roll that they do... You know what you're getting into here. Hell yeah. Hey, Dad, last... did, they, did they coin that term? Because that's the perfect way to describe them. That was the first time I heard it was when uh, Wolverine Blues came out. They called it Death and Roll. That is the perfect fucking genre for them. Yep. Genre name. Cool. I just came up with it right now. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I came up with Cookie Monster Vocals. I really did. <laughs> We're going to be rich. That was when Scream Bloody Gore came out. I was like, he sounds like Cookie Monster. But anyway. Oh, you did? Really? Is that true? I, it is true. I, I, I probably didn't coin it, but... But I still. came up with it before I heard anybody still, else say it's it. Still <laughs> mine, damn it. Still okay. mine. This next one, we don't know how to say, it, George, so go ahead and try. Yeah, this is the Finnish band Oransi Pazuzu and their new album, 
Varatalia? I don't know if... You, I think you pronounced it correctly because that's the way I, I read it too. The first word, I don't know. But the second word is the name of the demon in The Exorcist. Ah, Pazuzu? Yeah. Okay. And this is sort of a... They're built as psychedelic black metal. I honestly don't get a lot of psychedelic out of it. I mean, I guess maybe they do some like long meandering kind of... Yeah, it's not. That's more uh, isis drony type stuff. Yeah, I haven't heard the new album yet. I like the last album, so... I'm looking forward to getting to my hand. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. It's um well, I, I haven't heard the first one, so I don't know what it's like, but um it's kinda well it's almost exactly what I said. It's like a black metal ISIS y drony thing. And it's not like a super speed album by any strange sense. Right. Um it sounded okay. I have to I didn't give it enough time to give you a real opinion. Okay. Next up, uh, Voivod uh, is releasing their Post Society EP, and we've already talked about that one, so I'm not going to go into that anymore, but it's definitely cool. If you like Voivod, check it out. Next up is a band I haven't heard from in a while. I think they've been uh, deactivated for some time, probably like 10 years. It's a band called Beseech, and they have a new album coming out, uh, My Darkness, comma, Darkness. This is an album for Buke and his current thing, unless your kind of prog thing has died a little bit, Buke. But this is, a, like, Check out. This, is, this is a John album, for sure. Yeah, this is one. Of, I, I don't. I haven't heard anything from the new album yet. Uh, I've got a bunch of their old albums, and at the time it was kind of cool. Uh, this was like you know harsh vocals with clean female vocals kind of stuff and i tried to actually listen to some uh from their souls highway album uh earlier today and i was like oof i remember why i don't listen to this <laughs> stuff anymore Oops. so uh i was like well there's way t- there's way too many female vocals on here for me not that i have anything with female vocals but this style i'm i'm just kind of over me too not really my cup of tea not to crap on it or anything but well i i i'd, I'd like to hear what this new album sounds like to see if they've you know changed anything up at all but we'll see pretty sure i heard it on spotify i went and looked i checked everything on the script today and i did hear some of that one and i think it was spotify is where i heard it so all right i haven't heard this next one yet either but i am looking forward to it it's the new church of misery and then there were none these guys are uh, some interesting uh, doom metal all their songs tend to be about uh, serial killers like specific serial killers i've never heard them before but i always see this that Kingdom Scum album in our fucking local record store. Yeah, I've every got, time I go. Yeah, I've got, the, I've got it on vinyl. <laughs> it's the even though you could say this about all Doom, it's the kind of Doom that is pure Sabbath worship of that specifically like Volume Four era. So this is like what happens when a death metal band writes Doom because yeah. it's like the, the 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 subject matter is all very death metal, but the music is Doom. Yeah, it's total Sabbathy retro. You know, we're using old amps kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next, second to last one, we've got the new Mortis album, uh, The Great Deceiver. I listened to, uh, Metal Hammer was streaming this, and I listened to this yesterday, and, uh, yeah, it's all right, you know, if you like, like, late 90s, uh, industrial metal kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Some, it's par for the course for him. Yeah, it's, it's more of the same. I'm not really there anymore, so I can't really get excited about it, but yeah. it's not bad. But somebody out there listening is going to be excited. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Especially since I think it's been a while. I'm trying to remember when um, the last one came out. It's been good six years, as much as six years. It's been a while. Uh-huh. Maybe, maybe even more. And the last one, I still haven't heard this yet either, but I, I do have their previous EP. This is the new Oceans of Slumber and uh, Winter. I know they got a new uh, singer on that last EP. Don't recall her name, uh, but it was a really cool EP, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing this one. All right, let's get into our top three. This time I came up with the probably not so brilliant idea to list our top <laughs> three uh, albums we like to listen to on vinyl. Eh, I mean, it is brilliant in its way, and it's not yet, but it's just hard in its way because we were sort of like, I mean, I, I, you guys probably had as much trouble as I did. Uh, well, it's, part, you're, it's, no, it is hard because the more I thought about it, there's albums that I want to love on vinyl there's albums that have spent a lot of money to try and get on vinyl rainbow uh rising being one i wanted that album the day i started collecting vinyl records i got it i don't know if it was a bad press or just how it was back then it's 
horrible. Hmm. Is it an original one? Then, in other words, it is. You got? It is. Yeah. Oh, it is. Yeah. Well, there one, was a nice reissue of that, by the way, Buke. Just so you know, a nice twenty dollars. Yeah, reissue. I think you've mentioned that before. I probably should just get that. Just fucking get it. Yeah. And one thing I thought of was that uh, that you're sort of limited by your collection at this point. Yeah. You, you know, as to what you know, because if you don't have it on vinyl, then how would you know if you like to play it on vinyl? So. Um, so yeah, I was like, oh, that won't be so bad. But then, you know, I'm, I, I, I went through my discogs looking to go, okay, what do I have? And what do I really like to listen to? And so it was, it was tougher than I expected. So, I, uh, there's a couple obvious ones for me. Um, I, I, I went for the easy wins that I, I know I'd like to listen to. So perfect. Well, I'm going to crank it out then I'll start out with, uh, my number three, which is a high and fire record. Uh, death is this communion. And I, I have high and fire digitally on vinyl, probably most of them. And for some reason I do put this one on vinyl more than any of the other high and fire records. It's a real punchy. This, this is the one that opens with fairy whip, which is such a great song. And it's just got a great cover. It's just a good vinyl experience. So Excellent. high and fires death is this communion cool buke what do you got for number three this is a band that you and i were turned on to a couple years ago it's a old 70s type of, of sound this is a band the dagger ah they sound that 70s again deep purple throwback sound this is a self-titled album and it's just kind of uh, it goes back to that time when records were originally being pressed on vinyl mm-hmm. and it's a it's just shines through not super super heavy by any means, but it sounds great. And while I have it here, I have to go on record. Allison Chains Unplugged is still my favorite, un- my favorite vinyl, but it's not metal, so I'm not going to include it on my list. Mm, now I want to go listen to the Dagger one. I've got that Wait. on vinyl too, and so good. My number three is uh, Nightfall by Candlemass. Oh, uh, dude. As one of my earliest vinyl purchases, and to this day, I just think that it just sounds so cool on vinyl, playing it through the speakers, you know. Uh, it's just heavy and, and warm. I, You know, I think, and I don't know, I can't predict what you're going to have, Buke, but... And I don't know if this is just the retro thing or what, but Doom is a pretty important... Vinyl is pretty important to Doom. So I'd be surprised if we don't have at least one kind of Doomy record. So Candlemass is a great choice. What's your number oh, two? Uh, yeah, it comes back to me. My number two is um, one that I, I first heard uh, on LP. Um, I did not have it for many years, and I got the reissues when they came out, and it's Led Zeppelin 1. I just It does my childhood mind good to put that record on on vinyl and listen to it. I sit there, I hold the cover in my hands when I'm doing it. Those re masters that came out a little while back were insanely well done so i've got just this scratch free completely smooth non-hissy led zeppelin one love to put it on i i got those reissues as well and i have to agree now i want to go listen to that too yeah they're nice man. They're, they're nice they're super nice you know and it was and they did them all exactly like they were when they came out so you got all the weird little packaging shit and stuff which was great because i wasn't buying records when the zeppelin records came out because i was a little bit too young so it was fun to get it it was like what it must have felt like to buy uh you know um houses of the holy for the first time you know so, yeah yeah Dick, what's your number two I'm doing double duty because it's number two, so double deuces. Opef, they're very similar bands. Opef, Ghost Reveries, sounds amazing on vinyl. And what I use to, I use this one on vinyl to actually show off my nice speakers that I have. Uh, Between the Buried and Me, the Parallax 2. Ah, that's another good one. In fact, I I showed off my speakers to you with that one. (laughs) You (laughs) certainly did, buddy. That's right. Hey, Buke, I noticed... um, to kind of sidetrack you for a minute that you got your deliverance and damnation in the mail the other day or maybe you bought it in the store yep. is there anything fun in that package what is it like when you open uh, it up plain jane it's uh i thought it was not even a gatefold it's just you open it it's you know one of those ones that's kind of like a yeah f- f- like a folder almost in a sense okay and just three just just the uh, three records in there uh, Deliverance, you know, since it's longer songs, those are those make up three records. Or sorry, two. And Damnation's one by itself. And inside, it's, inside, right. inside the box, are they merely in a slip the cover? Slip, or are just, they just a slip cover? Okay, all right. And it's really nice, though. You know, remastered mixes by Steve Wilson. Um, so it sounds. You know, you could t- tell where different levels were tweaked and raised, and yeah, so it's cool. I, okay. you know, while I, while we're on that topic, really quick, what do you guys think? We've talked about this. Where I'm not talking about 
when they remastered to kick out members of the group and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, you mean like Ozzy? Uh, exactly. What do you guys think when they go back and they let somebody else remaster an album? It depends. I mean, like, it wouldn't make sense if Zeppelin did it because Jimmy Page was the guy who mastered shit in the first place and yep. mixed it and stuff. So, and, but I, and in some cases, it's guys, they're letting people do it and they let somebody else do it in the first place. You know what I mean? Like, so it's probably okay. I guess it depends on the person and the vision. And I've never heard uh, a uh, remaster that's so, or a remix more importantly that so thoroughly changed the record you know what i mean within reason there's a couple and one that comes to mind is there's a whole new vocal line on the remix of melissa on the song melissa from merciful fate and it kind of ruins the song for me there's this one thing at the end where he doesn't sing and suddenly there's this voice there and that was like a weird okay. fucking choice because see the, the interesting thing about this jay steve wilson he engineered and pr produced this in the first place in the first place is it that technology is going at such a rapid pace and that there's more digital mixing and stuff to go with i don't know what do, do you think, think george yeah, know, that's a real good. I don't know if it's like all technology; it's always constantly changing, and so you know, it's it's likely that there's better technology than there was even just a few years ago. But then there's also the fact that no artist is ever happy with what they put out, and you can always go back and tweak it more. Or, or maybe he goes back, and listens to it. It's like he always gets that one part, and he knows what's coming, and he's I like, it. "Damn it, <laughs> I'm gonna fix that one part. I'm gonna fix it." Yeah, but you know, too, those, that package is specifically vinyl. Correct, abuse. Yes, yes, it is. And, and, that, and, and I will say this: that a lot of bands fuck up. You no, know this all too CD. well. No, I take the back. There is a CD. Okay. But the thing, well, but the interesting thing about this, Jay, they both albums were recorded at the same time. Oh, I remember it well. Yeah, but I well, the thing that I was going to say was just like your Wolfhammer CD rather vinyl that you fucking hate um oh, is that wolf hammer is that the name of that band no vol um you just got it a little while ago oh uh, i'm thinking about my let me okay, the oh the woven war woven war thank you and so I will say this, if you don't master an album and, and all that shit for vinyl, that makes a difference. And so that's another thing is maybe they wanted another crack at that. I don't know. Hard to say. Did you, but you say you, you, you've had a slightly different experience with these vinyls than you, like you hear some different things. Yeah, I do. I, I was hearing, I sat, I listened to it last night with drunk Matt from the podcast and <laughs> you know, you can hear, um, you know, the backing vocal tracks in some parts, you know, the bass is tuned up and down. It really I just listened to Damnation last night, so I could really pick out parts, and it sounds a lot clearer. You know, okay. I, I think that's the one key thing I've always liked about Opeth. Their recordings are always knocked out of the fucking park. I uh, and I credit Stephen Wilson with that. Oh, and, hands down, buddy. Yeah. So that's you know, what that's what made me prompt you that question to you guys is with his recordings from our end, it always sounds amazing. Why did they go back and do this again? Because you're never satisfied. True. True. Uh, okay. My number two is Fate's Warning, Awaken the Guardian. Oh, cool. It's just one of my all-time favorite metal albums, and I've... I don't know. I just I love putting it on and just chill, just relaxing and, and checking out this album. So when George is that show, the Prog September, Park and is that the album they they're playing? I forget. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Prog so Power. September. Wow, you got a little ways to wait yet. Yep. It's okay. I got Death Fest to hold me over. My number one is an album that. I mentioned the very first time I was ever on the pod, and Buke said to me, oh, Jay, if you put that on in vinyl, you'll shake your house. And um, and he was absolutely right, and I love to listen to this record on vinyl, and it's Paul Bear, Foundations of Burden. Mm -hmm. just, nice. Just fucking mm -hmm. So big, heavy, shaky. Rah, yep. Rah, 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 rah. Yep. Yeah. yep. That's a great one. That's my last comment on that. Buke, what you got? My number one uh, album I like to listen on vinyl. I paid a pretty penny for this bad boy. Uh, Ahab the Giant. Oh, fuck yeah. I it's, was going to put that in there, and it, I, I opted it, not to. It's... Oh. And is it perfect? It is. <laughs> That's a good it, fucking it way is, to put it. it. Listen to it digitally does not do it justice. When you hear this clean singing, it, yeah. uh, the recording is perfect. This is what vinyl is all about hell yeah great choice and then when i'm not listening to metal i put in my steely dan asia record but that's for a different podcast sure yeah. my number one is it, no surprise you'll probably roll your eyes uh but this is the album that actually reignited my interest in vinyl this is uh woods of e prey five gray skies and electric light when uh 
when David Gold passed, I immediately lost my mind and just started getting anything and everything that I could get my hands on Woods of Epre. And that included picking up Woods 5 and Woods 4 as well uh, on vinyl, even though at the time I didn't even have a working turntable. Uh, but it inspired me to go out and buy a new turntable to fix the one that I had broken. Uh, and so I went out and bought a new turntable uh, so that I could listen to this. And it was just like, you know, the clouds opened up and I was like, vinyl is good. And so it was all downhill from there. <laughs> yeah. Now you're screwed. Yeah. Thank God they don't make it out of some explosive material or something, dude, because your house <laughs> would literally be like, you know, some sort of fucking zone where they couldn't fly airplanes over it or something. You know what I mean? Just like. If vinyl records emitted radiation, George's house in the neighborhood would be like Chernobyl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, why don't we move on to what we're listening to? My list is pretty short. Um, well, I did just, as noted, get the Destroyer 666 record, and it's very clear to me I'll be listening to that quite a bit uh, over the next couple of weeks for sure. Um, as I mentioned to George a while back, I've been listening to Hyrex uh, again, I'm enjoying them. A um, couple other things that are kind of stuff kind of spinning in from the old school that I like. But the, the record the, that I'm most obsessed with for this year so far, just put a review up on the webpage, Facebook page, uh, the webpage, is uh, the Riding Christ Rituals album. I'm loving this fucking record, dude. Me it's too. It's one of those ones that I'm kind of spinning it back, back to back. Like I, had a, I was listening to it at work the other day. I listened three times in a row. Wow. It's <laughs> fucking great. Are you going to go back and listen to some of the other ones? Yep. Um, well, I, I downloaded them all already. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and you were right, George. You, I, I have to give you props. Triarchy of the Lost Lovers is my favorite one of the old stuff. Yeah, it's just yeah. it's it's awesome. I I want to go back and explore um, Dead Poem and Sleep of Angels a little bit more yeah. because those were sort of a drastic change in sound from Triarchy, yeah. and so I didn't really give them a lot of love when they came out. Uh, but I've, I've listened. Uh, I'm going to do the whole catalog. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and uh, I started listening to uh, Dead Poem again the other day, and I was like, oh, this is "So good! What the fuck was I thinking?" Yeah, so. good stuff. Really, and they're just doing something that's a little unique to me. And I, and I want to leave it at that. You can go read the review if you're interested to see what I'm talking about, or even better, go listen to it. So that's that's definitely my favorite record of the year right now. That's yeah. my number one right now. Right on. What's your list, to you? I'm gonna pull a George this week. You fuckers, get ready to hear what I'm listening to, boys. Oh, okie dokie. Uh, I am listening to. I've gone back and was trying to listen to some t- albums from 2015. I may have missed. Uh, a band by the name of Trial and their album Vessel. Not to last... be confused with Trials, that no, other band. Yep. Different this band. Is Trial and their album Vessels. Uh, again, from last year, Lord Fist. Oh, yeah. And their <laughs> Every album time I hear that name. Green. I, keep... oh, I always laugh. <laughs> I mean, it's just such a porno name, dude. <laughs> Gr- Green Eileen or Eileen, or whatever you say it. It's uh, like a speed metal um, album by Defaced. Called Forging the Sanctuary. Uh, another one, the band Striker and Stand in the Fire. That's thrash too, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. And it was kind of it was kind of talked about last year too. A lot of people like that. And a couple uh, band camp finds uh, the band Carnival of Flesh and the album Stories from a Fallen World. It's a symphonic black metal album from last year. Nice to check that out. Uh, awesome album art. Um, out recent, in fact, I think it may have came out a day or two ago, uh, the power metal band Wisdom hmm. and, their, and their album Rise of the Wise. I saw that, but I haven't listened to it yet. Pretty awesome stuff. And the band that I am kicking myself in the fucking teeth for not listening to enough of. Uh, never listening to them in the past, even though they've been around. And you can hear me getting worked up about hating myself right now. <laughs> Ex Mortis. I thought you already oh, right liked on, them. Dude. I I had, but they just fell off. You know what I'm saying? Fell off. 
Yeah, right. you never really you yeah, never, never really did exact. the whole thing. Yeah. Now when we get when George gave us the album Ride Forth, yep. I have gone back hardcore and listening to these guys again. Awesome. I I've spun that a few times myself, Duke. That's a really cool record. Man, it's a really fucking awesome record. And uh I will get to it in uh vinyl, but I'll just mention it again right here because why not? Uh aborted termination redo, their EP. Good stuff. Yep. All right. And again, one more time, the Obscura album is still pretty fucking amazing. Oh, good. Oh, I'm glad you I forgot to mention that last episode. Talking about Shake Your House fucking bass and guitar bands, the new Conan, Revengeance, is awesome. Yeah, that's good, too. Okay, All right. here we go. Here we go. Oh, my God. If you thought the last one was long, well, I've got even more. I'm going to make a theme for you, George. I'm going to make a theme for what is George listening to. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be in the style of sleep. <laughs> Yep. Yes, it'll be like a uh, dope smoker. <laughs> Just really <laughs> slow and long <laughs> for like an hour. Yeah, and it'll, it'll, it'll be the music bed whenever you, you start yes. talking. Come, my children, and sit around the fire. I will tell you tales of what I've been listening to to put you to sleep tonight. You know, there, there's, there's two camps. There's people out there listening right now who are like, fuck them, George. Give them your list. Yeah, yeah. well, I've gotten a couple of uh, messages from people, uh, and I appreciate it that they're like, yeah, man, we, we like these lists. So I'm going to keep doing them. As, you know, whatever I, whatever I come across, you're going to hear about it. And if you have a problem with it, do your own podcast. Yeah, God damn it. It's my podcast. I don't say what I want, fuckers. You, say, you save a lot of people a lot of time, and I'm not fucking with you on that. that I'm not joking, dude. Going through GarageBand and every other source can be wildly entertaining, but it can also be mind-numbing. You are the filter saving a bunch of people a bunch of fucking time. Yeah. And like I said, I, I you know, I can't stop. You know, uh, before, <laughs> you know, like 20 minutes before we did the... The pile of priests interview. I was everything was set up, and I'm just sitting here going, "Okay, what do I do for the next 20 minutes?" I go on Bandcamp and buy two more albums. <laughs> I mean, your your upset your obsessive dysfunction is to the benefit of our listeners. Yeah. All right. First album. I bitched about them on the last episode because they did not release their album on Bandcamp when they said they were going to. This is the self-titled All Hail the Yeti. I broke down and finally got it so that I could get the flag files for it. It's a cool album. It's dangerously, perilously close to being metal, metal core. It's close. It's close, but I like it. So, you know, whatever. It is what it is. It's a good album. I love the name. Yeah, it's a cool name. And like Jay, was, I think it was Jay was saying, uh, we need to get them on tour with Troglodyte. The Yetis versus the Troglodyte, the Bigfoots. Next up is a band called Audrey Fall. And their album, Mittau. They're an instrumental metal band from Latvia. Uh, this is actually came out in 2014. Yep, got it here on Spotify. I just noticed that they're actually not together anymore, unfortunately. But it's, it's cool instrumental stuff. So check that out. You can get it on Bandcamp. Or like you just said, on Spotify. Uh, next up, we have a band. It's a French doom band. This is their second album. I'm going to butcher everything about them. Their name is Barabbas, B-A-R-A-B-B-A-S. He's a bad guy from the Bible. Oh, yeah, okay. The right, yeah. Stop being too smart, Jay. Is it Barabbas? No, I think that's the, I, that's the way I've heard it, and I'm Barabbas? trying to remember what he did. He might have been one of the guys hanging on the cross next to Jesus, but uh, I'd have to look that up. The album is in French, it's Messe pour un chien. I have no fucking idea how to pronounce that, but... Is there is there a question mark on the end of it like that? Nope. <laughs> uh, but I found them on Bandcamp, and I just thought it was like a... It's a Doom album, but it's, you know, it's not run-of-the-mill. It uh, Anything that I hear that's like Doom and is not the same as every other Doom album kind of holds my attention, and... They did, so I bought it. Uh, the The vocals are all in French, unfortunately, but the, it, it's kind of they're a lot of clean, atmospheric vocals, so it's just kind of ethereal. Next up is the band Sirith Gorgor, and their sixth album, He's Visions of Exalted Lucifer. These guys are from uh, Netherlands. Uh, it's black metal, and uh, what initially caught my attention about these guys. Uh, is their album art looks in a I similar just, I just bought that. I know a similar going. style of Blue House Nord, right? Blue House Nord? No, the reds, you went different. The reds, you know what that looks like? The reds and the whites? Hmm. Shemesh. I was going to say that too. They also have that like I I I think of it as the Blue House Nord uh from like uh 
the the the, the trilogy albums that yeah, he but did. remember the Smash is that red and gold and white. Yes, yeah. no, that that is that is also a perfectly good uh, comparison. All right, I, I just want to kind of validate my wisdom, as Buke says. I don't know, Buke's probably never said that, but in any case, uh, Barabbas was the guy that Pontius Pilate let go when he said, "We're going to let somebody go today. Who will it be?" <laughs> And then Jesus ended up on the cross. So Barabbas is the guy who was down at the diner going, whew, that was close. <laughs> Dodged a <Yeah>. bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Tough day. Yeah. All righty. Next up is a band called Dry as Dust, and that's all one word. Uh, the album is called The End. They're a Finnish power trio doing like 60s and 70s influenced hard rock. Um, it's got a slight witchcraft vibe to it, but kind of not. It's it's just kind of cool, kind of trippy, hard rock. Not really like stoner, um, so I don't know. But you know, check it out. It's on Bandcamp. It's pay what you want, if, if I believe, or at the most, it's a couple bucks. I think. Next up, uh, these guys are awesome. Uh, I can't believe I hadn't heard of these guys before. They're called Earthen, and I actually picked up uh, three of three releases from them on Bandcamp. Uh, but the one I'm going to talk, the two I'm going to talk about, uh, is the EP, which is their latest, called "With Twelve I Ride," and then the full-length album before that, "The Fate That Binds Us All." These guys are a U.S. Uh, like folkish metal band, and I heard about them on the Woods of Epre tribute album, "Heart of Gold," which I'm going to go ahead and mention is also something I picked up this week. Uh, and they, they do, you know, a cover of, uh, one of the, the Woods of Ypres songs on there. And I was like, wow, these guys are really cool. The singer sounds kind of a lot like, and I, so much so that I had to look it up, uh, like Don Svanu of every other band you've Everything. ever heard of. <laughs> Dan Swano of Dan Swano. Yeah. Of, you know, he's, he's got the same, like, uh. Like Nightingale, uh, Witherscape kind of vocals. And what I was like, ooh. What's name again? Earthen. E-A-R-T-H-E-N. And it's it's really cool. Uh, it's also, I believe, uh, pay what you want for each of these. And here's the, here's, here's the clincher where I get you guys. Is uh, on the, I believe it's the EP with 12 I Ride. The last song is a cover of I Am a Viking. Oh, no oh, shit. Oh, dude. Think of I Am yeah. a Viking with Svana singing. I'm buying that dude, fucking that's, right that, uh, now. What's My the name God. of the EP, George? It's with 12 I Ride. You know what? I just learned something valuable. And that's that I never occurred to me to check and see if there was a band camp app. I'm a fucking idiot. I just downloaded it. <laughs> you can't buy on it, though. No. You can't buy. Okay. It. But it still helps me search for George's stuff, especially. Yeah. yeah. George, is that 12 spelled out? Yes. Yeah, I got it right here, Buke. I'm going to fucking sample this shit. Yeah, I, it's it's all really good stuff. So I, I highly recommend all of those. The first album, uh, which I didn't write the name down for, but it's the one that's not these two. Uh, is a little more black metal. There's like harsh vocals and stuff, but everything else after that is like all like clean, really, really good stuff. All right, this next one is one that I I would also like to impress upon everyone listening to check out. I mentioned this band's last album on a previous episode. This is Hands of Despair and their new album, Bereft. You've heard of people talk about uh, Death Doom before, and that usually is like, it's doom metal with harsh vocals. It's slow, but they're like, bah. This is more of a death metal with a touch of doom. It's pretty fast a lot of the time, and it's harsh vocals. And this guy's harsh vocals blow my mind. I think they are just amazing. He's got such control over his... It's just, it's awesome. He's got this really cool, like, cement mixer gravelly voice, but it's, which is still, like, completely intelligible. Right now. Uh, you know, it's a new singer on this album, and I was I was kind of bummed by that, but... Only until I heard him. This is a really good album. So check these guys out on Bandcamp. Uh, I'm going to skip over the next one. It's The Heart of Gold, a tribute to Woods of Ypres. Uh, okay, I'm not going to skip over it. I'll tell you a little bit more. Uh, it's just a bunch of bands paying tribute to David Gold from Woods of Ypres. Uh, some notable ones on there. Earth and the one I just mentioned. Uh, November's Doom has a track on there. And uh, both uh, Joel Violette and Ray, uh, f- obviously from Woods of Ypres and their own various projects, uh, they do a version of the track Silver, and it is just beautiful. Moving on, there's a band that I'm, I don't know how to say it. They're a French Viking black metal band. It's called Himmenbjörg, and their album Weird with a Y, W-Y-R-D. Um, there's anything that really stood out about this. It's just kind of cool black metal. 
Next up is the band Hyperion and their album Serifical Euphony. I'm glad you mentioned this. <laughs> I This is an early contender for album of the year right now. It's yeah. amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. Are you thinking question mark, Jay? Well, hit me, hit me with it again because, I mean, I, no, I just, I loved all those words. I was just like, oh. it was like oh. listening to a different language. Okay. Say the name of the band again, George. Hyperion, and the album is Ser- Sera- Seraphical Euphony. Is it on... Uh, um, it's on Bandcamp. Uh, on Spotify? It is. Okay. These guys are uh, melodic black death from Sweden. Uh, some really Absolutely cool guitar amazing. work. Yeah, I'm glad you like that. I, it's, it's really good. Oh. Next up, uh, a UK black metal band by the name of The Infernal Sea. And their new album, The Great Mortality. This was just, uh, again, it was just some black metal that hooked me. I really like the album artwork. Uh, it's it's sort of a themed album. I don't know if it's a concept album, but it's a themed album uh, around the period uh, when the Black Death hit Europe. Next up is The Moth Gatherer and their album, The Earth is the Sky. It's a Swedish post-metal sludge band. Uh, really great production, good stuff. Uh, next up is an Italian doom metal band called Modus Tenebre and their album Death Rising. This is another doom metal album, maybe because it's Italian. I, I re- Italians do doom metal really well, I think. Uh, it's just got a, a kind of a different sound to it. And that, that always, you know, makes me bite when I hear something a little different. Next up is a band called Oaken and their album King Beast. This is an experimental hardcore band from Budapest, Hungary. Uh, it's loud, it's heavy, it's noisy, <laughs> it's it's interesting. This next one is one that uh, Buke told me about on the last episode, and I think maybe he heard from John. This is Perihelion Ship and A Rare Thunderstorm in Spring. Yes. It's a Finnish extreme progressive <laughs> metal yes. album, and I frankly... What do you think? I, it fucking blew me away. I love Isn't it amazing? This. I love this album. It's amazing. I, they've got some curious album artwork, but wow. You know, I would never would have guessed the music based on the album cover. It's amazing. Yeah, really good stuff. Next up, coming to us from Brazil, is Son of a Witch and their album Thrones in the Sky. This is total Sabbath worship from South America. It is, it's cool. Uh, I got this. I also got their uh, self-titled uh, EP as well. Next one is an interesting one. This is... Uh, Temple of Gnosis, that's G-N-O-S-I-S, and their album De Secretis Naturi Alchemica. It's a Serbian death doom band. There's a lot of really cool atmospheric instrumental work, seriously deep vocals that I, I'm thinking they really have to be uh, affected because they're just so deep uh, and like clean. Uh, it, this was some. This was part of my uh, my last snow shoveling uh, listening experience and. Uh, it's not a real busy album. There's a lot of just atmospheric stuff between all the heavy parts, but it's it's a very interesting listen. Next one's for Buke. This is a German power metal band called Thornbridge and their album What Will Prevail. You heard these guys? I have not. It's pretty cool. It, uh, to me, there's a little bit of like maybe maybe some Rhapsody in there. I'm hearing German power metal, maybe Avantasia a little bit. Uh, maybe. It uh, I, when, you know, I find that when it's power metal and I like it, it tends to be German. I don't know. But give it a listen. See what you think. This next one, uh, and every once in a while I pick something up that I, I kind of question myself because it maybe seems a little commercial. Not in the commercial sense of millions of people will like it, but just uh, it's it, it's more produced. It's it's a little more like slipknotty. This one, uh, to me, sounds like a combination of Avatar and Faith No More. This is the band Tooth Grinder and their album Nocturnal Masquerade. And uh, I don't know what to say else to say about that. <laughs> it, it, it's just it, it's probably very common sounding, uh, but it engaged me. You know, the, the production's really good. And it's it's interesting. So I don't know. You, you just have to listen to it, I guess. Next one is another one uh, via Buke. He's going to... Oh, man. I'm fucking loving This is rare. You're going to love this, too, because this is Trench Rot and Necronomic Warfare. Hey, hey. Yes. yes. And I, I listened to this, and yes, you're right. This is pretty damn good. It's, it's, it's older than I thought. I didn't realize it was like 2014 or 2013 or something like that. It's a little yep. older, but it's, it's definitely cool. And again, from, from the Crypt Sermon, guys. Yeah, yeah, that's wild. Okay, next up, 
Uh, this is another side project band. This is uh, a combining of two of the guys from Brutal Truth and two of the guys from Napalm Death. This is Venomous Concept and their third album, Kick Me Silly, VC3. That would be Kevin Sharp and Dan Lilker from Brutal Truth and Shane and uh, Danny from Napalm Death. Dan Lilker also from Nuclear Assault and... Anthrax at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for like a minute. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is like grindcore, but it's like good grindcore. You know, if you know if you know what I mean by that, it's good grindcore. Uh, it's pretty cool. Next up, uh, another band from the Netherlands. This is a black thrash crust band called Villainy, and their second album, Villainy Two, Dim. It's uh, they really caught my ear when I, I listened to some samples on Bandcamp, and the, the production was really good. I was like, wow, you know, I just expected. When I'm just like going through listening to things, you know, and playing a few seconds from every band, you hear a lot of bad production. And when you hear something that maybe you didn't expect to stand out, all of a sudden you're like, oh, it sounds really good. Caught my ear. I went back and listened to more and it's it's pretty cool. You can get it on Bandcamp. Look for it there. Another one that surprised me. I've been seeing this album around and I've completely ignored it based on the album cover because it looks like really bad cheesy power metal. It's got like squiggly fonts and 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 like some sort of like painted artwork that just it just looks bad. But somehow, I, maybe in a magazine, I read that they were actually a Death Doom band. I was like, hmm? And so I listened to them, and I was pleasantly surprised to find out that the band When Nothing Remains and their new album In Memoriam is actually quite good. Don't judge this album by the cover. Uh, and then there's the two that I picked up today. Uh, I picked up the Pile of Priests Unholy Death EP and another uh, Death Doom band called Pendulous and their album A Palpable Sense of Love and Loss. I only listened to the barest bit of that one. It was one of the ones I was just like, oh, it sounds cool. I'll buy it. And I bought it right before we started recording. I want to note that uh, I've also spent a lot of time listening to a lot of uh, punk music this past couple of weeks. I've been trying to sort of cleanse my palate because I've been listening to so much extreme metal that I'm kind of getting burned out, as you can tell by my long list. Not that burned out, I guess. But uh, I've just been trying to listen to a lot of other things to help me, you know, just cleanse the palate a little bit so that I, I can listen to more stuff. And at first I was listening to a bunch of Rat and Dokken and stuff like that. Uh, but then I moved on to some punk music and I've been listening to a lot of Ramones, Bad Religion, Germs, Dead Kennedys, Black Flag. And then uh, after talking to Jay about Hyrax, uh, I listened, started listening to DRI because they're playing together. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, moving into the, like the crossover stuff. Uh, in fact, I was listening to DRI's crossover and like, uh, four of a kind, one of my favorites from them. Those are both good records. And, uh, then I also, from there, I had to move on to corrosion of conformity's animosity album. Cause that's also a great crossover album. And there we are. <laughs> Exhale. <sighs> we should, you should have a contest with yourself to see if you can read your whole list without blinking. I don't think I could do that. I mean, what you was could that, do like it. 15 minutes? Oh, come on. Come on, <laughs> I'd go blind. You know yeah, well, you're not going to do it with that attitude. That's true. Oh, fine. I'll see what I can do next time. All right, well, let's move on to our classic albums. <laughs> I went a little uh, classic rocky this time. I think it's more of a hard rock band, but this was a record that I loved as a kid. Triumph Allied Forces. Oh, yeah. A great record from start to finish. Yeah, it's like the uh, the Rush uh, clone band. Basically. There's some hard rock songs on there. There's kind of a poppy hit. I wouldn't call it a poppy hit, but I call it an FM radio hit. Um, and ma- the song called Magic Power, which is all about the love of music. Yeah. The song Allied Forces is this fucking killer fucking tune. It's a great it's a great record, and Rick Hammett's a really good guitar player. Definitely, if you want to stick your hand in some sort of maybe, what is it, mid-80s, FM radio hard rock, Triumph Allied Forces is a great place to go. Yeah, that's a great album. What's your classic, Duke? Sticking with my current flavor, like it's been for the past couple weeks now, which is Thrash. This is the album from 1990. I think it's their third album. Forbidden, Twisted Into Form. Oh, I love that album. I, you know, I saw them on that tour. Uh, they opened for Death Angel on the Act 3 tour. I saw them All in right. Detroit. That was a great show. I think I saw those guys when I went to see King Diamond. They were just there, I mean. They live here. Yeah, yeah, they're Bay Area. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I saw them all. I mean, they were all wearing forbidden t-shirts. <laughs> it was them. Just I pretty cool, you know, American thrash, you know? Yeah. 
Good stuff. Ah, like you know, Chalice of Blood isn't that on there? Uh, no. Oh wait, which one? Wait, Twisted into Form? I think that's it. Chalice of Blood's off of Forbidden Evil. Ah, right. Okay, so it was the the previous one that I saw them on. Sorry, that's right. That's the second album. My bad. Yours, George. Uh, mine is one that I actually mentioned, I think, on the last episode, but I've been I, I've been listening to it a lot more. It should have been in my uh, forthcoming what I purchased, but it's not on vinyl. So. Uh, but I, 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 I wanted to get the, I wanted to get the high quality version. So I, I went and bought the CD last week and this is uh ludicrous and immaculate deception. Cool. This album came out in 1986. They're a New York band. They were on combat core. They're one of those, uh, crossover hardcore bands from the New York hardcore scene. Um, and the singer, uh, the singer at least, I'm not sure about the rest of them, went on to do Scatterbrain, which is, I think, what I mentioned as a classic a couple weeks ago. And uh, it's just, it's really good. You know, if you like the the fast, punky, thrashy music from the mid-80s, you can't go wrong with this one. Classic tracks like Fire at the Firehouse, Most People Are Dicks, <laughs> Blown, in, <laughs> Blown Into the Arms of Christ is a good one, uh, Green Eggs and Ham. Uh, they they cover uh, Last Train to Clarksville. It's uh, not anything like the original. Um, so yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. Wait, you know you know a band. I meant to mention this to you, George, recently because we we had a very brief conversation about punk. And a band that I remember uh, that I really liked back in the eighties was The Accused. Did you ever listen to them? Yeah, the Martha Splatterhead stuff. Yeah, it was good. It was good stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's some sense of humor in there too. So it's good stuff for punky punks. Yeah, somebody else brought that up. At least I think it was somebody else. I was wondering if it was Trevor might have brought. It seems them like up. It'd be a, that would be up his alley. I think. Yeah. Hey, Trevor. Hey, Trevor. All right. Uh, vinyl purchases. Nice short list for me this week, but both very satisfying gets. Um, I got two two albums this week uh, since the last pod, and that's it. Um, I got the Rotting Christ record, and it's like this limited edition, and it plays in forty five speed for whatever reason. I don't know. It's two discs. It's just it's a normal twelve inch record. Nice package though that came with that. And I was really excited to find it in the store because it was right when I was like, "This record fucking kills." Sorry to interrupt. I've got a couple like that, like the and Justice for All. Is it forty five speed? It is, and the uh, the Avatarium uh, Girl in the Raven Mask. I it's forty-five. Yeah, I neglected to notice that, and I put it on at thirty, <laughs> yeah. at 30 and I was like, "Damn, this is heavier than I remember." Yeah, the Wild Throne, that Wild Throne EP is in um, 45 too. Yeah. And I put it up once and I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, and then then she started singing and I was like, what? she sounds like a dude. <laughs> I was like, okay, there's got to be something wrong with the speed here. <laughs> Did you? Do we have any concept? Does, is there some sort of audio quality that, that improves or something? We don't that, know. That's huh? what the Metallica album says. It says, mastered at 45 speed for better quality. Okay. Well, I'll let you know about that. I haven't even put that album on yet because um, I've been listening to the digital copy. Secondly, I found a copy of Pig Destroyer's Terrifier, which really sent my heart through the roof. I was like, what the fuck? Because on Discogs, this thing is always expensive. And lo and behold, I came to find out it was a reissue through Relapse, which is fine, and I couldn't care less. I don't need the original issue. But it's nice to know that they just reissued some of the back catalog uh, Pig Destroyer stuff because they're real expensive on Discogs. I couldn't be happier to have a copy of uh, Terrifier now on vinyl. Nice. And that's it. All right. Buke, what do you got? Uh, first, we're going to start by saying uh, those of you with iPhones, I don't know if it's available on Android devices. Uh, if you've used the app Milk Crate, that's what I personally use. Uh, I've been beta testing the official Discogs app. It's just like Milk Crate. It's almost like their copycats are developed by the same studio. But to sum up a long story, the official Discogs app will be available on the 29th. So by the time you hear this, you should be able to go download it. I can't believe that there wasn't one until now. I, I That's know. crazy. I, it's it's crazy. Uh, but two purchases, uh, you know I got the Opeth Deliverance Damnation and Aborted Termination Redux. Excellent. Cool. I didn't think I was going to have much, and then a few things showed up that, uh, you know, you order stuff and you forget about them, and then they show up, and it's a happy surprise. Oh, yeah. Well, the first one wasn't a surprise, and that was the the new Anthrax for All Kings. That showed up uh, on Friday, so yesterday. Uh, and I got to say, I was really impressed with the packaging. It comes in a plastic slipcase that it's, like, all dark except for one spot in the center, sort of like a spotlight. And so you can see the cover through it. 
And I was like, wow, this is not the album cover I was expecting. And then I was like, oh, it's a slip case. And you, you pull it off and it has the full album cover. But when you put this on, it has the band logo and the album title, whereas the album itself does not. Oh, and, nice touch. And uh, yeah, it was pretty slick looking. And then it's like a, you know, a gatefold and it was like a bluish, whitish vinyl. So it's pretty. Is it two discs? Yes. So it's pretty sweet. Uh, then I got, uh, I got three Death Spell Omega albums. The last three. So if you know what those are, you can figure that out because my butchering them is probably not going to help you any. Uh, Paracletus <laughs> was the last one, the most recent one. Before that is uh, Fos Ite Maledicti in Ignum Eternum. <laughs> and then uh, the one before that is C Monumentum Requires Circum Circumspice. It's probably not how that's pronounced. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's some crazy black metal craziness there. Uh, I also got Utre's Ghost Chance album, which is a really good underrated album from last year that you should check out if you have not heard it. Really good black metal. And then uh, <laughs> I also got Stellar Master Elite uh, 3. Yay! <laughs> Eternalism, the Psychospherical Chapter. Did it come with any... No. I don't want to say promotional material. Propaganda. Uh, <laughs> indoctrination type thing. Yeah, no. no. Nothing like that. Okay. All no. right, good. I'm good. We're still, we're, you're still safe with them. Yep. And then two more that showed up this morning for surprising. Uh, I got uh, Iced Earth's Horror Show. Nice. And Iced Earth's Something Wicked This Way Comes. Just saw that in the store the other day, and it, that's a nice little looking gatefold package. I'm assuming it looks pretty nice inside. I haven't opened it yet. I, it, okay. like, just got it. You know, you guys knew about that. I remember because Duke ordered, um, you know, uh, what's the spawn one? Dark, Dark Saga. Dark Saga? Yeah. I know. I remember you ordered that straight off the bat. Was there just like a mass release of Ice Earth vinyl they, again or something? They did like a few reissues, you know, last year, and then I'm not sure when this came out. I just stumbled across it. Uh, they, there's also the uh, the first album they did, but yeah. I didn't I didn't like that, so I didn't bother getting that one. Well, something because I saw something this wicked in the store. Something wicked this way comes, which means to me that, that is one of the ones that just came out. And I also saw a big stack of like the um, Dark Saga and a couple other ones. So yeah, no, that's, that's cool, dude. They um I don't I only have two Iced Earth on on vinyl. And that's the the two concept records. Yeah, we were lucky enough. Buke and I were lucky enough when we saw uh, Ashes of Aries last time that uh, we got Matt Barlow to sign ours. I I got him to sign. Uh, um, Dark Saga and Burnt Offerings and Ashes of Aries. Nice, dude. All right, let's do our deep tracks. Deep tracks. God, I feel like I did this one once. And if I did, well, I feel, that's I, life. I feel like that about mine, too. Do you? Okay. This one is off of the Saxon record, The Power and the Glory. And there's a song on there that I think was actually a single. So that doesn't make it seem like a deep track, but I don't think anybody liked it. I think I'm under the impression I'm the only guy in the world likes this song, but it's called Nightmare. It's like the second song in the record or the third song. And it's just this really good, weird, it's almost got like a vibe of like, you can't stop rock and roll about it. Um, mm. Like the Ozzy song. It's like a sad, somehow weird, tear drinking heavy metal song, but what at, at the same time being a real heavy record or song. Don't know how to explain it, except it's just a song I've always loved. Right on. Buke? You guys mentioned this album earlier, uh, funny, but off of uh, Marching Out by Inve. Disciples of Hell. Nope. Ah, shoot. On the Run Again. Oh, fuck yeah. Dude, that thing shows off uh, Jeff Scott's vocals. Yeah. It's big time. I wish... I wish he had kind of gotten into some other stuff after the fact. I know he did some other things, but he was a good singer. And that's a great record. Dude, that album, oh man, it's amazing. I have to tell you, I, I was watching a rerun of uh, that metal show last night, just out of sheer boredom. And and Ingve was the musician that sits up in the stands, George, and plays, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and he's always, you know, I mean, you could say what you want about the guy's kind of a jerk off and any number of things or whatever. But there was this one passage in particular when they went to a commercial that I rewound and watched four fucking times because it was like it's just he just like put in like six tricks that are difficult to do on the guitar and it would be quick time changes the way he did it was inc i he's an amazing guitar player he's he's crazy he's nuts yeah, yeah there's something is. wrong with it i think he's a fucking you know prodigy like this whole other level of thing and it's not always even interesting to listen to but you cannot deny how well that man plays that's why he's got a driveway full of ferraris <laughs> that's exactly right <laughs> What's your deep track, Georgie? Mine, uh, I tend to uh, stream of consciousness with these things. Uh, you know, all that punk music I was listening to last week, one of them I was listening to was the Dead Kennedys, and the singer for the Dead Kennedys is Jello Biafra. And Jello Biafra uh, contributed to this song, 
which is Biotech is Godzilla from Sepultura's Chaos AD album. Mm-hmm. I just fucking love this song. So there yeah. we go. That's my, it's, it's deep and it's a classic. It is. Yeah. Is it because Biotech is like, is that like a really bad thing in Brazil or something? And I know he was, I mean, was that a real company? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I think theoretically he's just talking about, I know there's a line like strip mining the Amazon and okay. yeah. stuff like so that. Just, just like you know, corporate irresponsibility. Corporate irresponsibility, yeah. I believe yeah. is the, uh, the theme of the song. Yeah. Yeah. I always kind of wondered ever since that song came out, but I actually had learned that he was involved in that song when I saw Max Cavaliero interviewed on that metal show, strangely. I didn't realize he'd been involved in it. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's cool. That's cool. I see him around here every once in a while. He lives here, too. And every once in a while, he'll show up at a show or something. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's kind of a pudgy old-looking guy now. Yeah. (laughs) He's still awesome, though. He was a pudgy old-looking guy when he was young. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we saw him at uh, Guarbecue, uh, not last year, but the year before, when he was doing the eulogy for Dave Brocky. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, this brings us to the end of the episode. We're going to give you another song from Pile of Priests here in a moment. But before we get into that, make sure to check us out on our new SoundCloud page. Check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter. I am Disciple of Metal. I'm at Opeth Fan. At Catatonic J. We're on Instagram, we're on Stitcher, and of course you can always find us at wearemetalheads.com. All right, let's get into our last little bit with Pile of Priests, then we'll play you a song and we will see you next time. Evan, I have to ask, did you, did you just shave your, your beard? Um, Within the last, like, two weeks, yeah. <laughs> because I'm, I'm looking through all, like, you know, your pictures and press photos and stuff like that. I'm like, who... Who's this castaway here? <laughs> like, man, that's pretty epic. Yeah, dude. Um, well, uh, I've actually rose to a higher position at my job that's closer to the corporate side of okay. things, but I still can keep my long hair. I'm never okay. getting rid of that. I just want to say, ponytail it. you are my favorite member of the band because you're wearing, I see in one of your shirts, a Rhapsody Power of the Dragon Flame shirt. Yeah. I, I fucking love that album. See, and like, I went through a pretty big power metal phase, and, you know, so Gamma Ray's cool, Halloween's cool, and, you know, a lot of those bands with, like, the happy go lucky riffs, but Rhapsody is the one that, you know, I think transcends all those bands. And you're wearing an Opeth shirt and another one. Let's, I'll, 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 I'll give you my phone number. We can talk. <laughs> yeah, let's hang out. Let's hang out, bro. <laughs> So we're getting ready to play another song from Pile of Priests, Void to Enlightenment. I was hoping you could tell me about this one as well. Yes, sir. This is the song Templars of Sodomy. And before you get into it, I have to append this with the question, what exactly does a Templar of Sodomy do? Does this involve Turkish bathhouses? <laughs> <laughs> it could, a long, long time ago. Um, it's, it's just about the Templars and how corrupt they were. Um, you know, they were they were sent on the mission from the church, but they would do anything and everything else in between to go behind their backs. Uh, they're also brilliant bastards, you know, setting up like the first like kind of parcel system as well. Um, but a lot of times they would go through and rape and pillage and take money. And, you know, they, they were even said to be doing a, what is it, head worship. So like some kind of like demonic type shit where you know, they were not Christians. Um they uh yeah they uh they did a lot and i i think they're great guys um (laughs) so that kind of plays into that um the name was just you know brutal and i thought that was cool because it would offend somebody doing it in the butt's brutal yeah what's brutal and offensive sure that's that's (laughs) kind of what we were going for and that's the only song on the album that i use uh the seven string guitar with as well all right Uh, okay here it is templars of sodomy
Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-